mind and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So there are certain things we must always expect here. Number one, encounters. Koinonia has been designed by God. Our ministry to the body is to create a platform for people to have dramatic encounters with God. An encounter is an experience that makes a person real. When you meet me, you can say you have had an encounter. Because in meeting me, you will have the opportunity to have a closer look. You will talk with me. You will be able to interact with me. You will be able to understand my ideology. This is what an encounter is. So through the, the ministrations, through the worship, through the testimonies, and everything that we do, we seek to stimulate an atmosphere that brings encounters in the lives of people. It is my personal opinion that you are not a Christian if you have not encountered God. It doesn't matter how long you have been to church, if you have not had a personal encounter. We used to say it before, now preachers don't say it. They just say, do you know God? And we know that God means everything to people. God is a bottle of minerals somewhere. God is a shrine somewhere. An encounter. They call it a personal encounter. You can have a corporate encounter, but everyone needs a personal encounter, an experience that makes Jesus real to you, an experience that makes the life of God real to you. There's no hope of turning back after an encounter. It's not about trying. It is impossible to want to opt to go back. An encounter. Very important. Hallelujah. Number two, the second thing that we represent to the body is a platform where an understanding of the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom is received. It is important to know that God has committed unto us the message of the kingdom. The message of the kingdom is the understanding of the principles of the kingdom that seeks to reveal to the believer his responsibility, the part he has to play as far as experientially enthroning Lord is concerned and then extending the influence of his reign. We have that assignment to be able to make men see, to bring people to an understanding where they understand that um, if we are to command victory in life, it will be on the strength of the mysteries, the principles of the kingdom. So this is a place of understanding. That's why you never hear people tell you oh, stories, stories here and there. We are concerned about you having the knowledge of the principles of the kingdom. That is the only basis for a victorious life. Emotions don't produce victory. Listen, listen. Emotions don't produce victory. There are so many emotional things happening in the body of Christ. People cry, they jump, and, and, and I'm not against all these things, except for the fact that if they do not have life applicable, kingdom founded principles, they are not going to produce results in the lives of people. And you know, the system of God is such that after a period of God investing in your life, you will expect fruits. 
he came and saw the fig tree and cursed it. Why? Because it could not produce. So if you claim to have been around the things of God at a point in your life, there should be evidences. Evidences. Something should start working. Everything cannot go bad. If everything is bad in your life, then something must be wrong. And you must seek to find out, not look for who to blame. You see that? Because that's what we do. We look for someone to blame. We look for demons to blame. And sometimes they are guilty, but not all the time. We look for parents to blame. We look for government to blame. In this place, we cultivate the spirit of responsibility. That if anything will ever change in your life, it's up to God and you. Not God alone, not you alone. So koinonia comes as the word that defines that experience. Partnership. It takes partnership between God and man for anything notable to happen. We're very responsible people. We believe that my destiny and your destiny is not just in the hands of God to decide. Uh -uh. We have a role to play and that our assignment as individuals and as a people is to make sure that we are hands on on our own part of the partnership. Because the problem is usually from us, never from him. You've been faithful, Lord, through the ages past always faithful that is why your name is forever that means if my life is not moving forward listen if my life is not moving forward i will be stupid to blame god are we together i must understand that god his name is faithful it's not an attribute he has the bible calls him in revelations faithful and true there is no shadow of turning in him so if anything is wrong in my life, things are not working, I'm not reflecting the reality of the word of God. I must with all meekness take responsibility and say, look, there is something I do not know or there is something I have not understood. There is something I have not believed. The moment you assume the position of responsibility, you are ready for divine help. God will never come and stretch his hands towards a people who are not ready to take responsibility. Are we together? The third thing that God has anointed and assigned us to do is the ministry of signs and wonders. Listen, you must understand that the ministry of signs and wonders is way beyond the ministry of miracles. The ministry of miracles is largely limited to bodies and all of the signs and wonders um, are supernatural occurrences that challenge the belief systems of men and cause them to see the sovereignty of God displayed in the midst of the people. That's why you see certain things. They are not necessarily miracles. You understand? Someone can be shouting outside. I can tell you two people are going to shout right now. That's not a miracle. That's a sign and a wonder. Are we together now? Yeah. All of a sudden, supernatural occurrences begin to happen. All kinds of strange demonstrations of the spirit. I can be saying God is giving you speed and then you see people start running physically. Why are they acting out those things? It's a ministry of signs and wonders. When you understand this, when you bring someone for the first time and the person is, are you sure this guy is not a herbalist? You tell him, no, 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 no. This is part of the call. There is an anointing for signs and wonders. Very few people on earth have it. Many people have the anointing for miracles. But not signs and wonders. He says, I will show signs in the heavens and wonders blood fire and smoke these are three mysteries i will show signs in the heaven prophet joel told us that is part of what comes with the outpouring of the spirit so aside from healing miracles aside from deliverances and all of that signs and wonders meaning that when you come for koinonia you expect the limitless dimensions of the holy spirit demonstrated without restraint anything can happen i can be talking and all of a sudden, someone is shouting. And if you do not know that is part of the package here, you may be afraid. But when you know, when you hear someone shouting, instead of looking and saying, I hope this guy is not lying, you just say, God is here. And he's here for me too. You see that? Yeah. Very important. When you understand these things, there are other auxiliary assignments, of course, the blessings of the kingdom 
financial prosperity, the wealth of the kingdom and so on and so forth. Everything God has sent me to do, everything God has sent us as a ministry to do, we are unapologetic about it. Why am I saying this? That means if I claim to be sent by God and if I claim to be teaching you and you are participating in what I am saying, it means if you are not changing to become what I claim God has asked me to do, something about my call and election must be questionable. If I claim God has called me to heal the sick and I pray for 100 people and not one person gets healed, I need to go back to God and say, Lord, something is wrong somewhere. Transformed lives are the, like the trophies. The Bible calls them the seals of apostleship. Right? So that you look at your life and say, my God, look at what God has done in my life. I came and I met Jesus. My life has changed. So he releases the anointing that is responsible to produce that result. That's why many of us are gathered. That's why the testimonies are here. And tonight will be no different in the name of Jesus. You will always learn something when you come to the presence of God. I'm, I'm, the goal here is not to make you aware. You must understand that beyond the words you are hearing, there is an anointing that backs it up. That anointing is what empowers you to perform. Otherwise, all I'm giving you is a lecture. It's an intelligent lecture. Because some of the things that I'm communicating, some of them are products of researches. The research does not have an anointing in itself. It just has information. But when that research is taken in the place of prayer something comes upon it it's no longer a lecture note are you seeing now so when i'm speaking to you ordinarily you would not have believed what i'm saying but there is an anointing upon it that compels you not only to believe but receive the grace and you will stand up and receive and reproduce the result listen let me tell you brothers and sisters hear me the ministry of transformation is a system you must understand if you are in this place and you are called into ministry, whether you have started or not, pay attention. Get ready for empty pews if you don't understand the technology that transforms men. People will hype you and you will be excited for a few months waiting for the next person who will open church near you and they will all move there and leave you because they are tired of your stillness. There's got to be something that brings freshness to people. Are we together now? When a businessman comes to Koinonia, he must find a dimension of the kingdom that can minister to him. When a student comes, he must find a dimension of the kingdom that can minister. So, when our little children, our little ones, as small as they are, they must be able to find a dimension of the kingdom that can minister to them. Failure to do that, we are not in ministry. We are just acting on stage. Hallelujah. And this comes with a price. Prayer is only one of the price. It comes with diligence. That's why I challenge a lot of people, especially those who want to go into ministry. You know, most people think ministry is a lazy man's work. When you don't get a job, you know, they didn't give you employment all around, you just quietly go and start ministry. No, ministry is not for lazy people. Ministry is for diligent people. The, the hours it takes to prepare just a simple message that you deliver in, 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 in one hour or so and now we, we live in a, a technology driven society you mention one Greek word you are lying about it someone is checking right away and telling his name he said no 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 it was 1997 this word it was a mistake he will even say the article where you got it wrong it takes intelligence not just spirituality you should not just say something you must have something to say everybody is saying something people don't listen to talkatives again so on one side, you are contending for the power, the grace, and the anointing. But on the other side, you must give people information that is worth their time. Nobody has time to waste listening to junks and nonsense. You can impress yourself as a man of God and flatter yourself together with your workers. And then people just watch you and pity you for a few months. And finally reveal to you how much you are not blessing them by their absence in your meeting. You should miss koinonia and feel it. That's a sign that you are receiving something. That if for any reason, because of your busy schedule or travel or trip or whatever, you miss koinonia. There are thousands of people, close to 100,000 people, connecting from different parts of the world. 
online right now listening to me as I'm speaking. Why? Some of them are unable to make it. That's a blessing. The moment our teaching is uploaded online, in 24 hours, there's 1 million downloads. In 24 hours, transformation. Somebody somewhere is depending on that truth. Are we together now? I'd like you to pray just one prayer before I continue. And say, Lord, make my life valuable. Let me be a blessing. Open your mouth and pray, please. You brought me to the earth for a reason. Lord, I don't want to live a mediocre life. The dimension of diligence it will take. The dimension of consistency it will take. To emerge triumphant. Grant me the grace. Go ahead and pray. Challenge laziness. Challenge unseriousness. Challenge mediocrity. Challenge playing around and wasting your time. The labor dimension of a successful life. The labor dimension of an impactful life. You must cry for it from heaven. I live to praise your name. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. I live, I live to praise your name. And I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. I live, I live, I live, I live. I have no fear. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is ministering one more prayer point for me that we will pray. I'd like you to pray for the next one minute with all your heart and say, Lord, there is a faulty understanding in my life that is keeping me down, that is limiting the ministry of the Holy Spirit in my life. It may have come through culture. It may have come through my pain. I cry to the heavens. Give me a visitation. I declare my disloyalty to any mindset. I declare my disloyalty to any ideology, any thinking that is not consistent with the word of God. Any thinking that is not consistent with the ways of the kingdom. Any thought pattern that is not grounded and rooted upon the working knowledge of the word. No matter how long I have sustained that knowledge, lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart. I may be Igbo, I may be Yoruba, I may be Hausa, I may be whatever nation, whatever locality around the world. I insist in the name of Jesus that my mind conforms to the patterns of the kingdom. There's so much the Holy Spirit wants to do in and through my life. Something about my life is the reason why I am poor. Something about my, my life, my mindset is the reason why the anointing cannot flow freely. There's a reason why my church is not growing. There's a reason why my life is grounded. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. No blaming parents, no blaming government, no blaming neighbors, no blaming anyone. I take full responsibility over my destiny and I declare my willingness to change. That as the word of God comes, I receive it. I don't argue with what works. Hallelujah. Please sit down. The Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. I say it all the time. This thing we are trying to get to has been, is a destination that someone is currently there. Your future is someone's present already. The dimension you seek to enter in the anointing, there is a living person on earth walking in it. Though we are few... We're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. 
I like this part of this song. That's the only part I'm interested in. We may be few who are serious about this. But the Bible says, I mean, Don Moen, really, not the Bible. It says we are surrounded. No, no. In fact, the Bible even says it. It says we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Witnesses. Men who have done it before. They grew up from poor families. And they caused them that you will not make it. But they accessed a mystery. And they rose beyond that dimension. They went to school with no one to pay their school fees. Only a box. But a dimension of God bailed them out. Time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. He said, men who through faith subdued kingdoms. Wrought righteousness. It's not new. You are not the first to do it. Women who were barren declared that they did not have womb, but they accessed a mystery in the kingdom that gave them womb, and they gave birth to twins and triplets. You are not the first. Don't mourn as if there's no hope. There is hope. But the hope is in a dimension of the word of God you catch. Not every part of the word of God is responsible for your answer. Your answer is somewhere. Your assignment is to search it out or listen to those who have searched it out. You don't argue when you don't yet have results. It's pride. Archbishop Benson Idahosa said, you only criticize a man who you have done twice what he has not done once. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Lord, I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. For my life and destiny, I hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. No matter what I'm going through today, Lord, I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, sing it with faith in your heart. I look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh. He said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Jeremiah 29, 11. It says they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future an unexpected end surely said there is an end and an expectation someone needs to prophesy this there is an end this hunger will not be forever I, I no no I may not have an anointing now but there is an end there is a day I will access a deep fountain of grace that the nations will see the hand of God upon my life my child may not be making it now but I tell you brothers and sisters there is an end prophesy it in one minute I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Pray, my hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Lord, I look to Yahweh. My eyes are upon you, Jesus. They may criticize you, but fix your eyes on Jesus. They may not understand why you are this passionate. Fix your eyes, not on the mockers. Fix your eyes, not on the problem. Fix your eyes, not on the limitation. It says looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher. Come on, sing. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. sit down this is already a word for someone tonight even before we start though weeping endures for a night my bible your bible says joy comes don't allow little hindrances on your part of greatness make it look as if God lied you have been tithing you've not seen anything 
you've been praying there's no grace that is at work i tell you something is happening in the realm of the spirit he said ye who have continued with me one day it will be like a dream you will come out of your house in the morning and step into a dimension that you will never 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 recover from listen sit down let me tell you a little story years ago i used to go in the night i tell you i feel such a strong anointing strong anointing of the holy ghost that's what happens when we begin to teach truth he's called the spirit of truth so he comes to pack the truth that you are receiving every time the truth comes it comes like an arrow it comes upon your spirit man and then you receive it capacity is given to you to rise in the spirit listen listen years ago every night i would just go and pray pray in the spirit for hours and study and return back no anointing no nothing then there was no access to the privileges that people had are we together now that time if someone fell under the anointing you would take him to the hospital very few people understood the move of the spirit i would go and pray in tongues and sometimes two three hours prayer will turn into a vigil and i'll finish and carry my bible broke but in the spirit never understood the things of god but in the spirit controversial and mysterious but in the spirit and i continued there and god told me he said son one day men will look at you and think you are a god i remember god told me that thing just continue sometimes with no food i had not eaten anything don't think i was born inside an aircraft no sir he said, for we do not. Let me tell you one of the symbols of the apostolic ministry. God will pass you through almost every problem you are anointed to solve. That is the only way the anointing comes. An apostle is not an evangelist. No. That furnace of affliction, you must pass through it. Is, is what creates the scar. He said, let no man trouble me. For I bear in my body the mark of Christ. Let no man trouble me. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. My hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. I look to Yahweh. Yahweh. For time Lord we look to Yahweh for the last time now hallelujah Please sit down if you can pick something to write. Let's just discuss a few things so that we can pray. When God is done with you, brothers and sisters, except you choose, see, listen, look at me. Let me teach you something. When you are being mentored and trained, don't change the equation you are giving. You will not be successful that way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't tamper with the equation you are giving. Be foolish enough to walk with it and watch the wonder it will make out of your life. Jesus said the kingdom is for children because if you tell a child, jump. If a Jimmy tells his daughter, get up and fly down, she will do it without thinking. Sometimes this hour, this claim that we have grown is the reason why we never walk with God. The simplicity of spiritual things. There are so many people who want the anointing but will never sit down to learn how it comes. You tell them this is how it comes, they will change the equation somewhere and never get it. And stay forever not getting it. Lord Jesus, let this place remain a place of transformation. We will be wicked people if we gather your people here and waste their time and not bless them. 
coming here alone is a sacrifice. You don't want to know how many spirits try to stop you to come for every meeting. That you can leave your house and come here is a sign that victory started, not that victory is starting. Sir, please stand up. I want to talk to you. Yes, sir. Yes. The Lord is healing you. You are sick. What's wrong with you? I'm seeing your legs. You stand a little and the legs, there's pain. Come. That devil will leave you now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. you and I'm seeing a man that the devil wants to inflict with paralysis like complete stroke sir it was on 1st January night hold on please Saturday very early I had to rise from the village back to where I'm staying it started. okay started when was that 1st January that is Sunday 1st morning. January yes that's when this happened yes My God. I rushed from the village to, to Abuja that's no I'm seeing you go for a meeting in a village or something. And while you were on your way, I'm seeing something leaving you from there. This is where this came. It is, uh, we are going to look for a land. Somebody is taking the land. That's what I'm and saying. Same. In a village. Yes. From there you went to Abuja. That's where the problem came from. Sir, this is not leg problem. This is witchcraft. You understand? No matter what kind of drug you take, you'll find out that it will not relieve you. I hope you are not embarrassed. Sir. Well, I'm tired of the drugs. That's why I left Abuja yesterday for the care. You came from Abuja? Yes. Do you think you will go back the same? Do you think it's fair if you go back the same? No. Do you think I will be a good man of God if you go back the same? Well, you are a man of God, sir. Now, think about this. This man left Abuja and came. Now, we have, we, have, we have made all kinds of noise. We are men of God. You see the danger of not preparing? You come and stand and brag around and tell people you are hearing the voice of God and here is someone left Abuja and came. Why should he not go to a herbalist if he cannot be healed? No, 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 no. I said it, if I were not a preacher, I would not go to a herbalist in the secret. I would go in the open and carry the charm and come for fellowship and sit down in front let a man of God look at me if you criticize me I say I agree I'm guilty but he, I hand over the charm to you hold it and heal me if you cannot shut your mouth you see that's why you need an encounter you don't talk like this without an encounter you will make a fool of yourself no, sir sir Jesus will heal you. This is called koinonia. Hold my hand, sir. <sighs> my God. Jesus, I cause this now. Right now. Out! Just guide him. Out! I command in the name of Jesus may the hand of the Lord touch you right now sir look at me lift one leg go ahead lift it just look at me forget about the leg lift your leg are you feeling any pain there now huh you're seeing improved yes right there look at this give Jesus praise come up walk come <laughs> lift it do what you couldn't do can you jump Try. Look at this. In the name of Jesus, that anointing is upon you. Never be the same. Not only this, but the Lord is restoring your finances. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. Are you together with that woman? I'm seeing life leaving you. That's your wife. Wife, come. Hallelujah. 
I'm looking at this woman in the spirit and I'm seeing a woman crying and saying, Lord, when will you visit us? Madam, please don't cry. Jesus is in this place. What is this? Who is the reverend? You lost your child. Who is the reverend? My God. It's all right. The Lord is restoring this family. Believe me when I say this. Mama, don't cry. Jesus is Lord. Daddy, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, there is a grace and anointing in this place to wipe tears. It says to comfort day that mourn in Zion. There are people who are mourning, although they are in Zion. Comfort those that mourn in Zion. Is that not what the Bible says we should do? We declare comfort to you right now. Stretch your hands towards this dear family and pray in one minute. Koinonia, pray. We bring your challenge face to face with the anointing. In the name of Jesus, we bring it face to face with the anointing. The same God that has touched you now. The same God touching mommy. Touching all the children. Hallelujah. Sir, I prophesy to you that after today's meeting, from as early as tomorrow, write it down, you will begin to hear dramatic testimonies in your life. Listen, you see, listen, I don't have a prophetic office. My prophetic dimension is creative. I will not just reveal. It makes it happen. You see that? There is, there is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic where you access what will happen and inform them so that you give them hope. But the creative dimension of God is your word is what makes it happen. So in the name of Jesus, whether or not that possibility was in your future, I put it there. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you, sir. God bless you, man. Thank you. Stephen. Stephen. Who is Stephen? My God, this is what happens now. Stephen. I'm hearing a name, Stephen. Stephen. If that is your name, if you're inside or outside, Stephen, I just want to speak to that. Stephen Your name is Stephen My dad My brother look at me God is taking the load on your head right now. I saw you coming in. I'm seeing load that is bigger than you. What? Why carry all this kind of load? Huh? Your life needs a real miracle. Almost everything about your life needs a miracle. And I'm going to pray for you. Look at me. Um, gentleman, I have to pray for you because I'm seeing the devil wants to put sickness in your body. And I have to pray for you. The devil wants to put sickness in your body and I'll pray for you. Oh, hurry up. Sorry. I hope I'm not wasting your time. Praise the Lord. I'm seeing two ladies. The anointing of the Spirit will come on them and 19 days at a stretch. The families will have breakthroughs. 19 days at a stretch. That's what the Lord is revealing to me. 19 days. 19 days. 19 days at a stretch by the Spirit.
let it be according to the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus my brother I want to pray for you the Lord wants to take this load away from your life yeah. you believe that yes. hold my hands Jesus please let your grace walk upon his life I set you free right now in the name of Jesus sickness leaves your body you have no business with infirmity I curse it in your life in the name of Jesus my brother God wants to help you but there is a lot of disorganization in your life you need a lot of order huh you need a lot of order in your life God is helping you in the name of Jesus I'm hearing the prayer of someone's mother in my ears and that prayer will be answered now with the anointing touching that person right as I'm speaking now the mother of that person is praying God is giving you wisdom a new dimension of wisdom that's what God is giving you fresh wisdom you need it for this season the Lord is giving you wisdom great wisdom great wisdom great wisdom can you just allow me flow as the Holy Spirit is flowing is that alright is that alright so that you don't feel sometimes God somebody at the back the ushering stand the power of God is touching that person right now Someone right at the back, the ushering stand. And the Lord is saying it is over. This is the prophetic word. It is over. It is over. It is over. I'm prophesying to 11 people. The mountain that stands before you. The mountain that stands. 11 people. 11 people. No, no. As I speak, the power of God will confirm it. The mountain that stands before you. My God says I should tell you to be swallowed up. Swallowed up. Swallowed up. Swallowed up. Kaparatokata. I place the word of God upon this. The mountain that stands before you is swallowed up in the name of Jesus. The mountain that stands before you is swallowed up by the anointing of the Spirit. Pay attention when you receive from God and expect to testify. hallelujah praise the Lord God is visiting someone in the worship team I hear laughter 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 that's what I hear in my spirit laughter I place the word of God upon this laughter that's what I'm hearing in the spirit the Lord is ministering to me someone radical breakthrough and transformation is coming upon someone in the worship team laughter that's what the spirit of god is ministering to me ministering to me ministering to me the lady standing near you the anointing of the spirit is upon her it's a new chapter in your life that's what the spirit of god says a new chapter in your life new chapter in your life the old is gone the old is gone the old is gone the old is gone behold I make all things new in the name of Jesus Christ 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 I'm seeing one of the usher ladies climbing a ladder in the spirit I don't know who but I'm seeing one of the ladies you are an usher climbing a ladder in the spirit and the Lord says I should prophesy it. You are an usher. I know you are walking. But this miracle is for you. Climbing a ladder in the realm of the spirit. A curse. Marriage curse. Is being broken in two families. Two families specifically. Now. is a curse. It's a curse. Is a cause Shabbata Lakata Brata Sebe Tekele Kataya. Break that cause.
break that curse there are two ladies here one is outside you've been having irregular menstruation this is this is a very dangerous situation and the Lord is touching that person one is outside and the Lord is setting that person free now now from that devilish thing it must go now the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty Paul said and when I came to you I did not come with the excellency of speech people are tired of all these things people need real breakthroughs in their lives there is power in the name of Jesus there is power To break every chain. Let me just speak to one more family and then we'll sit down. There is an Igbo lady or an Igbo family from Abia State. God is setting them free right now. I'm seeing it in the realm of the spirit. Abia State. And the Lord is saying it's time for the captivity of that family to be rolled away. It's time for the captivity of that person. Lord, I don't know who that person is, but I stretch my hands right now. And I decree and declare in the name of Jesus from Abia. That's what the Spirit of God is ministering to me. Lord, whether online, whether here, wherever it is, I pray that your power will break that family free from the shackles of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's someone following online from Joss. From Joss. You have an ear problem. And the Lord is setting you free right now. From Joss. You have an ear problem. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please sit down. Sit down. God bless you. A few minutes. Let's just touch on something tonight. Jesus. Please take something to write and um, let me just teach briefly. Our time is gone. I love it when the Holy Spirit steps in to do these things. Look at me. Do you know why many of us may never walk in these dimensions? The motif of our heart is to create an impression where people think this is an anointed man. If that is your motive, God will never trust you with this kind of power. You will destroy people with it. Are we together? Most people don't know that the anointing of the spirit can kill the vessel carrying it. The anointing is like electricity. The same electricity that gives light can shock someone to death. Are we together now? When God anoints you, the standards become higher of his dealings with you. Someone can do something else and go scot-free. But for you, just because Moses was angry, God said you are not entering the promised land. Yet the people who grumbled entered. So be careful when you just say, give me an anointing. There, there are rules. There is, there is a system with which you work with this thing. Pride. A lot of us here, if God should trust us with this kind of grace, people are in trouble. Especially when you enter a meeting where someone has doubted you for a long time. You say, let me, let, he's, he's, he's the one first. Let me release that anointing on the doubter and, and rubbish him. Then he will use that as a lesson and know that I am Apostle Joshua Selman. And God says, no way. My, the death of my son is too expensive for that nonsense. I hear the chains falling. No, I'm not singing. I'm prophesying. That's what I'm hearing. You will see it happen now. His word will never go for it. Don't mind me. Just allow me to do my madness. I hear the chains falling. Literally. 
I'm hearing physical chains. I give the chains. I give the chains. Lord, let them fall from the life of the people. That's what the anointing was designed to do. sit down. I want to teach you a very big secret tonight. Philippians chapter 2 the Lordship of Christ Philippians chapter 2 the Lordship of Christ Esther Yahi, the Lord is saying I am helping you. I'm bringing you help I'm bringing you help where your strength has failed, I am helping you that's what the Lord is saying what your parents could not do. I am helping you. I am helping you. Philippians chapter 2. The Lordship of Christ. What I want to teach you tonight is a very powerful secret. It's one of the mysteries that control walking in spiritual power. So I want you to pay attention to it. Hallelujah. Now, there are there are different dimensions of God as revealed in scripture. Please follow me. Different dimensions of God as revealed in scripture. And when a believer comes to Jesus Christ, when you come to what we call surrender your heart to him, it is important for us to understand what dimension of God is revealed. Are we together now? Every dimension of Jesus in the Bible is responsible for certain outcomes of a believer's life. The names of God all through the Bible represent different dimensions of him that were encountered by different people. So when they met the God that provides, they called him Jaira. Are we together? When they met a God who could override people's wrongs, was merciful and compassionate, they called him Rapha or Rapheka. Are we together now? So the names of God define the dimensions of his dealings and his operation with people. Now, when you come to Jesus, listen carefully. When you come to Jesus as a sinner, you hear an altar call or the spirit of God convicts you, right? The Bible says he will convict the, the world of three things, of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit to the unbeliever. The ministry of conviction bringing him to a point where he will see his need. The dimension of God that is revealed at salvation is Jesus our Savior. It is important you understand that. The saving dimension of Jesus, when you, when you preach Jesus as Savior, you reveal the love of God expressed to man through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. Listen, listen. Herein is the grace of God revealed. The Bible says that we are saved by that grace. Are we together now? So when you reveal Jesus as Savior, is the dimension of God revealed as Father, desiring to bring alienated sons and daughters who have been alienated, the Bible says, from the commonwealth of Israel. And he brings that through the substitutionary sacrifice the atoning sacrifice of Jesus. Jesus, our Savior. Dying on the cross for your sin and my sin to fulfill the law that says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Are we together now? So when you receive Jesus as Savior, and it's important, you know, many believers doubt their salvation. And the reason why they doubt their salvation is they do not know what the condition for a believer to be saved is. There's something they used to teach us called assurance of salvation. Assurance of salvation is not the same thing as salvation. Assurance of salvation is the basis upon which your salvation lies. So you know it and then you can know whether or not you are saved and in Christ. The Bible gives us very clear parameters to know that a person is saved. Are we together now? The Bible says, for instance, in Romans chapter 10, when you read from verse 8 to 10, the Bible says, who shall ascend to the heavens and so on and so forth. He said, but the word is nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart. Even the word of faith that we preach. That if you will confess 
with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him. So there are several things that must be believed by the believer. Those of us who are of the Anglican background, there's something that they call Anglican and I think parts of Catholic, the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed is a compendium of the revelation of Jesus as Savior chanted in a poem, right? So you say the things you believe that makes you a Christian, right? So you start, I believe in God the Father and Jesus his only son, so on and so forth, you know, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was dead and crucified, buried, he rose again on the third day, not the fourth day. It's important to believe exactly what the Bible says. There are people who believe Jesus rose up on the seventh day, you are wrong. You are still not saved. Jesus did not, because he, the spirit of truth cannot be administered with a lie. It has to be true. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Very important. There are many things about the Christian faith that becomes a foundation. If you do not believe in the virgin birth, you are not a Christian. I look forward to times when I begin to write books. There are many truths that must be taught the body of Christ. The virgin birth of Jesus is important. The virgin birth of Jesus is the only basis that authenticates his divinity. That means that Mary had Jesus without the assistance of a man. Otherwise, he could not have been divine. So the virgin birth is not just proving that the lady who carried Jesus kept herself until Jesus came. It's more than that. It's more than that. You must believe that Jesus became a man and walked on the earth. The earthly ministry of Jesus is part of the basis because the Bible tells us he became a man. That is the only reason why you should believe that he's a high priest who has been touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Are we together now? Yeah. You must believe in the fact that he was sinless. Now, this is the part people don't believe. If you don't believe that Jesus was sinless while he walked upon the earth, it's a terrible thing. There are all kinds of theologies going around saying, look, no, look, um, he, it's impossible. He was a man with flesh and blood. 100% man. It's important for us to... No, no, no. The Bible tells us and we trust the word of God. We were not there, but we believe in the integrity of the word because the Bible says holy men wrote as they were moved of the spirit. And the spirit of God is the spirit of truth, meaning he cannot lie. It's not that he does not lie. He cannot lie. Are we together? This is the confidence upon which our faith is grounded on. And you must believe he did not die on the road. Jesus did not die by car accident. How he died matters to your salvation. Right? The Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. How did that happen? For it is written, according to the Mosaic law, cursed is every man that hangs on the tree. The man who dies from starvation is not cursed. He just died. So if Jesus died without dying on the tree, he could not be a cause for man. Cost is he that hanged on the tree, right? That the blessings of Abraham, what is the blessings of Abraham? Not car, not money, justification by faith. That's what the Bible calls the blessings of Abraham. The blessings of Abraham is different from the blessing. There are two different things. The blessing of Abraham is justification by faith. God preached the gospel to Abraham, right? That's what Apostle Peter taught us. And Abraham believed God and it was credited unto him for righteousness. So we, like faithful Abraham, partake of that blessing by giving an opportunity to believe God and receive that credit of righteousness. That's the blessing of Abraham. So that we're justified by faith and then it gives us access to receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Galatians chapter 3 is what teaches us that. So it is important that we understand that Jesus as Savior talks about the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. Now listen please, there is nothing that any man can do to be saved. No, 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 no. By, by that I mean there, there is no contribution. There is a participation, but there is no contribution. Your participation is to receive by faith. That's the only thing. But you do not have a contribution when Jesus is revealed as Savior. The moment Jesus is revealed as Savior, he, the love of God is revealed unassisted. 
unassisted the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus that's the apex of the demonstration of the love and the grace of God behold what manner of love the Bible says the father had bestowed upon us that we should be called that's the process are we together are you following me now I'm taking our time to give us this basis so that it will strengthen our understanding there is no man there is no good works of any man that can be the basis upon which your salvation no 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 is is impossible I cannot be saved on the grounds of my works I cannot be saved on grounds of things that I have done no every time you look up to what you have done to be saved you are out of the grace of God but the moment you are saved not walking the works of kingdom is the abuse of that grace you see it now before you are saved you only receive after you are saved you are empowered the dimension of grace upon you no longer just becomes receiving it becomes an empowerment to do I must walk the works of him that sent me now this is the balance we must bring over the grace message there are two dimensions there is the grace that appears as God's mercy given to man simply because of our helplessness to be able to attain that position of righteousness the very nature of God but now having obtained that righteousness we are further empowered by the ministry of the spirit to begin to produce what the Bible calls the fruits of righteousness are we together but that's not where I'm going tonight there is a dimension of Jesus Christ that many people have not come into terms with it has not been a revelation to them and that's why they don't walk in power that's why they cannot walk in certain dimensions it's called the lordship of Christ it's one of the it's one of the the pillars of the Christian faith you cannot claim you are a Christian and not acknowledge the lordship of Christ Philippians chapter 2 please from verse 5 let this mind he says be in you which was also in Christ Jesus so the word mind there means an understanding there is an understanding that must be in you next verse says though who although being in the form of God taught it not robbery to be equal with God seven says but he made himself of no reputation and he took upon himself the form of a servant and was in the likeness of men eight and being found in the fashion of man he humbled himself you see that follow the progression and was obedient unto death mark that obedient unto death obedient even to the point of death obedient with no resistance we are studying the servanthood of jesus now the hallmark of his servanthood was what obedience that costed him his life right and then he says even death on the cross verse 9 wherefore on the strength of his obedience unto death although being God God had so highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name next verse it says that at the name of Jesus not necessarily the mention of it it's not the mention of it that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and of things in the earth and of things under the earth verse 11 and every tongue should confess that jesus christ is what the name that was given to him we have discussed this in koinonia the name is not jesus i hope you know this the name that was given to him is not jesus jesus was the name his mother gave him when they gave birth to him correct christ was the name he assumed when he became full of the spirit but lord was conferred upon him that's the name the name is not jesus the name is lord that confessed that jesus who became the christ in his earthly walk is now lord are you seeing that now to the glory of God the Father. So the Lordship of Christ is very important. Write this down please. There are a number of Hebrew words that are translated Lord. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to play around with Hebrew and Greek words. But just a few of them. There is Jehovah. Right? Jehovah is translated Lord in capital letter. It was his name revealed to, to the Jews as the God of the Hebrews. But there is Adon. 
from where we get the word Adonai, right? Is translated Lord. Lord. The Greek word is curious. Don't, don't, don't worry. I'm just giving you a theological background of the word Lord. And what that means is sovereign controller. Listen, please. It means master. It means owner. But it also means sovereign controller. It gives you a picture of one who either by his own strength or by your permission has unrestrained access to everything about your life. Are you getting the idea now? Either by his own strength, so I can come into someone's house and push the door by my strength. With respect to that combat, I am Lord because I push the door. Are we together? Or the person can open the door and welcome me. I am still Lord. So when the Bible gives the idea of Lordship, it talks of ownership, it talks of sovereign power, it talks of dominion, but it also talks of unrestrained access. Are we together? So Jesus being Lord is a revelation of one who has absolute control. This dimension of the Lordship of Jesus has not been experienced in many believers. Listen, did you know that you can have a revelation of Jesus as Savior and yet not have a revelation of Him as Lord? When you have a revelation of Jesus as Lord, it will change everything in your life as we are going to see shortly. The Lordship of Jesus is the dominion of His person over every aspect of your life. And there is a law in the realm of the spirit. Your degree of submission to authority is your degree of dominion. Listen, listen. The centurion came to Jesus. And he said, you know, this and that. My son is ill. And please, I want, you know. Jesus said, okay, you are a captain in the army. Let me respect you and come to your house. And he shocked Jesus with a revelation. He said, no, 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 no. You don't need to come to my house. Speak the word only. For I am a man under authority the authority of the roman government so my strength comes with my submission to that authority and because i am under authority i tell one go and he must go come and he must come so he said jesus i know that you are not here by yourself you too you are under an authority and jesus said i have not found such faith such understanding that a man knows the relationship between submission and power in fact, here's how Apostle James puts it. He says, submit yourself to the mighty hand of God. Then, he says, resist the devil and he will. He will not flee because of your ability to resist him. He will flee because of the authority that backs you while you are resisting. So your own power is derived from your authority. Is the Greek word exousia. The capacity to legislate on behalf of one on the strength of your co your connection are we together now the best description of that ability is marriage so if a man is married with his wife if the man is not around the wife can safely if he's a responsible man the wife can safely act in the stead of the man is that true yeah so jesus gives his bride the church the unrestrained ability to demonstrate the reality of his person on earth but there is a condition the condition is that like a faithful woman only becomes a faithful woman on the strength of her submission to her husband is that not true the bible says wives do what submit yourselves so the church that is now the wife of the lord jesus the bride of christ derives her power by submitting the revelation of the lordship of jesus is why demons eat up people cheaply why principalities and powers destroy people because when they come they see that you have believed in the substitutionary power of jesus but you have not believed in his life gaining dominance over you write this down the dominion of the word in us is the clearest measure of the lordship of christ in you the dominion of the word of God. Dominion means the degree to which your life is a reflection of obedience to the word. The dominion 
of the word in us is the clearest measure of the lordship of Christ. So if you say Jesus is Lord of my life, all I need to do is to see to what degree your life confirms to the word. And then I know whether or not he is Lord over your life. Because that Jesus we speak about is the living logos. John 1 verse 1. The word of God. Jesus gave us a mysterious statement. Say, how can you believe God whom you have not seen when you cannot believe your brother? So if you cannot believe the word of God written, you'll be a liar to claim you believe God. The Bible already said that God you believe inspired men to write this. If you do not believe scripture, then it means you are not a believer. Listen, the dominion, by dominion, the unrestrained access that you have given the word of God to find expression in your life is the clearest measure. Look at me. Jesus being Lord in our lives is not something that is just, it's not a lip service. Your life must demonstrate that death. Your life must demonstrate it. There are two standards that demonstrate that Jesus is Lord over our lives. Write it down quickly. Number one is surrender. Your degree of surrender. If Jesus is Lord of your life, let me see it by how much of surrender. How much you are willing to decrease that he will increase. Not how much you are willing to pray in tongues. Not how much you are willing to preach. No. Not how much you are willing to climb scriptures. Surrender. This is where many believers in the church are shortchanged and greatly cheated. The difficulty to surrender everything. King of my life. You are my own. And I live for you alone. You're the king of my life. You have my all. And I lay my life. Greater love had no man than this, than a man laid down. The degree to which you have surrendered your finances, the degree to which you have surrendered your emotions. Look up, please. You can be born again. You have given God your heart, but you have not given God your money. He's not Lord of your life. You have given God your, your heart, but you have not given God your intellect. You see, the area Satan attacks in your life is the area that the Lordship of Jesus has not yet covered. That becomes his place, his point of attack in a man's life. When Satan comes into your life, he can't just attack you anyhow. He keeps searching. He does it by trial and error. So he looks at your giving life. He looks at your obedience and he knows that Jesus is not yet Lord here. He looks at your ego and he knows that you can give every other thing but your reputation. And then his attack comes from the dimension of your reputation. Jesus is truly Lord in your life when you are completely surrendered. Everything. It, it is a theme in this ministry. How that you must surrender everything to God. It's called death. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ, the Bible says. Nevertheless, I live. He said, yet not I, but the life that I now live in the flesh that is the body i live by the faith of the son of god right who loved me and gave himself for me it's a realm called galatians 2 20 brothers and sisters please look at me whatever hold on let me press a point whatever in your life you cannot give god is the idol in your life and that's what satan will use to kill you there are many people is relationships and association you can give god everything but friends are we together yeah everything but friends everything but your education oh i'm brilliant you know i have a master's in this i have a phd in this and that and that i'm an intellectual i mean i'm, I'm, I'm this and that and that I, I have 12 masters and i mean you have to respect that and the devil says that's right he will use it and destroy your life everything you don't hand over to God cannot be trusted to bless you whatever it is in the kingdom things only bless us to the degree we've handed them over to God 
So the test of lordship was best demonstrated in the life of the patriarch Abraham. Genesis chapter 22 verse 1. The Bible says how that God tested Abraham. And he says, Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest. Right? And he says, and it came to pass after these things that God did test or tempt Abraham. He, God was trying to get to bless Abraham. But he knew that Abraham must be tested. That lordship test. Take thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest. And get thee to the land of Moriah and offer him for a bond offering. Abraham, come promise. Abraham wakes up in the morning to a prophetic instruction. After waiting for over 25 years to have a child. Please pay attention. And then the Lord tells him, carry this child. Don't discuss with your wife. Go and kill him. And then the Bible says, Abraham arose early. Everybody say obedience unto death. Say it obedience unto death. And he held his son. Do you know what that means? Gathered the servants and said, Look, we have to go and offer sacrifices unto God. And Abraham was thinking in his heart, My future. The son of every man represents his future. The one who continues the name. And he says, Abraham, destroy your future. Can you give up your future to prove that you love me? Abraham said, this is hard, but I will do it. You see, every time I teach about surrender, it does me something. Because it's something that has happened in my own life. It's a circumcision that only when you have given up everything, Master, we have left all to follow you. Left all to follow you. And he took Abraham. He took Isaac. When he got to the base of the mountain, he knew that the servants would think he has run mad and would stop him. And he said, you people should wait. He started climbing the mountain with his own son. Only son. His future. The son of promise. Waited more than 25 years. And the son Isaac started getting concerned. And he said, Father, I see the wood. I see the fire. Of course, he saw the knife too. Where is the sacrifice? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. In his heart, he was saying, son, before your arrival, there was one whom I loved and not even my love for you can compete. My God. That is the realm of men and women who will walk in power. Who can give God anything, including their lives. He tied Isaac. You can imagine Isaac begging his father and saying, Father, please, if I offended you, forgive me. And he said, no, no, it's not about offense. It's about the Lordship. And God was seeing a foreshadow of what only him could do. Do you know people could not give their children easily like that? God was about to give his only son. And here he was seeing a mortal man. And Abraham carried Isaac and dropped Isaac. The angels were wondering, asking questions. And said, I hope this guy is correct. His future is about to be jeopardized. He lifted the knife. Romans chapter 4. The Bible says that Abraham already planned, paraphrasing, that when he killed Isaac, he would beg God to bring Isaac back to life. In other words, God, I've obeyed you. Now my son is dead. Please bring him back to life. And when he lifted up the knife, God said, stop, Abraham, for now, I know. Not when you left your house. Now, now, I know that thou fearest me, seeing that you did not withhold your son from me. Here comes a blessing. Now, I swear by my name, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, listen, many people claim the blessings of Abraham. The Jews wanted to do that. And they said, we are the sons of Abraham. And he said, if you are the sons of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham. The works of, of Abraham is loyalty and obedience unto death. That's how you get the blessings of Abraham. It's not by chanting and quoting. Uh -uh. You are not qualified when you cannot submit and surrender everything. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, if it is God you are working with, 
he will demand everything from you everything just listen to what i'm telling you he will demand everything everything means he must probe it until it comes under his lordship just when you love this brother you cannot sleep because of him then god comes to you in the night and says my daughter you have been saying you love me so much but i'm asking you a question can you leave this guy he didn't say leave him it's just a question and he said no this, this has to be a demon i'm 32 i need to marry by march what kind of lack of breakthrough is this apostle prophesied miracle service that i must marry and now one spirit and you reject and cast when you finish god says are you done answer my question the still small voice can you leave the brother and just when you're about to think his call comes and he sends a text thank god for the gift of you in my life i said god i reject this I, I reject this don't play with my heart and god says that's the idol in your heart if you cannot lay him aside you finish with your salary and you are happy you want to go and buy trousers and shirt and god says carry all that money join it to whatever else you have in your account and just when they send you money from abroad and says carry it and go and say so God Abba you are joking even you you know I won't do it there's no point asking me you already know I would not obey you because it can't be you you are a good God you don't punish people like that you see how we use scriptures and then God looks at you whereas his plan was that by that act of obedience he will bless you do you know there are times god has told me please i'm not saying you should bring money to me after the service that's not what i'm saying get me correct so you don't think i'm using someone to manipulate you you know i'm blessed listen do you know that there are times god has spoken to me that he was going to test certain people and he will give them instructions to empty their accounts for instance and carry the money and come and give me now god did not tell me their faces but god told me that when they come i should not collect it i should only bless it and give them back and you see the people dragging themselves they stand like prisoners who just came out i mean they, they can't believe it they are surprised that they are obeying because they are not supposed to obey that kind of instruction obedience unto death while you are laughing i hope you get what i'm saying the implications of the lordship of christ and then they come and stand and sometimes it's not like i pray on the money and give them immediately i just bless it and i said all right um the lord will honor you and they live sad you know something you know that something died god is this you i did this did they charm me and after three days, I called them and I said, this is what the Lord has said. I should bless. No, 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 apostle. And I said, no. And within one week, their lives changed to another dimension. When you pass the Lordship test, no charm, believe me, no principality, no enchantment will survive you because you are under an authority that is committed to defending you. Hallelujah. One time, I heard, I think one of our people here was stranded somewhere and the person called me, he was a worker and he called me and he said I'm a worker in Koinonia, I'm stranded here and there and there and when I verified that the story was true, I said immediately we'll try to get resources to you immediately why? because the fact that that person identified as a worker and we know that the person is a faithful worker puts pressure on my integrity to defend the person are we together now? yeah that's why God does not show up and defend many of us. Some of you will go for a meeting now and say there is a lady wearing yellow. Whether you see her or not, the power of God will touch you and everybody is watching you and say, ah, apostle must be carrying a charm. It's not that easy. It's lordship. The key is lordship that I may decrease so that he, Christ, will increase. Have you laid down your Isaac? Everybody please look at me carefully. Don't say yes laying down your Isaac is do you know there are certain Isaacs you cannot lay down you can only give God permission to carry them you don't have the strength to lay it down hmm. Koinonia is quiet tonight because you suspect God will do something about this message I assure you he will 
don't, don't even try to hear. He will right away. The God I serve. There are prayers that you don't pray twice to answer. Let me tell you the kind of prayer God answers once. Lord, have your way. Ah, music to the ears of the Lord. Have your way. That's exactly because he really will have his way. But you see, you must trust him to know he will not destroy you. Look what he made out of our lives. I will worship him forever. Love him forever. Because this God is too I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is so good. You must get to a point where you can lay everything. Look at me. There are some of you, you claim Jesus is Lord, and the Lord just tells you, take one of your shoes out of the ten you have. Just take one shoe and you say, no, 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 God, you can't do this. You, he's not Lord. Brothers and sisters, you will never be blessed that way. As a man of God, there are times they will invite you somewhere and you have all kinds of honorariums waiting and then another small gathering somewhere and God will say, that's the one. The gathering where you are the one who will support them after the meeting. You will finish and say, I'm aware you guys don't have bike money. Take 1,000. And God says, that's the one you go to. Let me show you why many people never walk in power. The secret of power is the revelation of the lordship of Jesus. Jesus submitted, obeyed unto death. Wherefore, God so highly exalted him. Submit your finances to the principles of God and see the wonder he will make out of your life. Submit your emotions to the control of Jesus and see what he will do with you. Submit your gift and talent. Carry all your certificates and kneel down before him and say, Lord, you are the reason why I have this masters. I put it before you. What do you want me to do with it? And God says, that's all. Somebody will stop sleeping in NMPC. It does, I don't care whether you read whatever. God will wake somebody and say, bless my child because he has now put me in control of that certificate. You can carry it on your own and move around looking for job. And somebody will say, are you, are you with masters? Ask you, can you manage gate man? You say, about me? Because you are the one looking for it. But when you surrender it, God, surrender is powerful. I don't know how to tell you this thing. It's something I've done. Oh, listen, this man you are seeing standing before you can give God anything. Ask God. Ask him. Money, ah, that one is not even, I don't have to be a Christian to do that one. Years ago, the Lord asked me a question and said, Can you give me your life? And I told him, No. I honestly thought about it and I said, I can't give him my life. I can give you my heart to be persecuted. I can give you my ears to hear nonsense from critics, but I'm not sure I can give you my life because I was sincere and the Lord did something for me. Believe me, like Paul, for me now, Joshua Selman. To live is Christ. To die is gain. God uses a business terminology for, for death. I won't die. You, you try to kill me. You are wasting your time. You don't know how many times they've tried to kill me. But now it's not for fear. I need to be alive to do many serious things for the kingdom. So it's not just fear. Oh, accident. Ask my people what happens when we are traveling. There was a time I think we were going to Lagos or so. Or we're, I think we are coming from Ibadan. The plane was shaking as if somebody was doing high jump on it. Everybody, you know, first people start being uncomfortable. Everybody just greets their neighbor. I hope you're okay. And then later on, people want to on phone and snap so that whatever happens. Ask them. I, will, I sleep all through. Do you know the mysteries that surround my life to die? Yeah, yeah. Paul died. Immediately the people left. He resurrected himself. and said, let's, let's continue. Don't mind these lousy people. When he was done, he said, I'm ready to be poured out as a drink offering. I have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up. Are you blessed? Many people reject death out of fear, not the confidence of what their submission to God has brought. Please, Koinonia, don't trivialize what I'm telling you. If you want to see power and triumph, you want to see battles being fought for you, come under the authority of the Lord Jesus and see what will happen. What will it cost you? Hold on. It will cost you only one thing. Your ambitions, yourself, 
your will. Your will is the price to pay for Jesus to be Lord. Your will. Your will. Self. I want it my way. It must be my way. I want to live in Abuja by myself. God says, go to Zamfara. He says, I cast that spirit. Zamfara, where? I'm, I, I, the Bible says, a land flow with milk and honey. And you go to Abuja and live like an armed robber there. Hopping from place to place because the hand of God is not there. Are we together? Yeah. To sacrifice your will is one of the hardest things for a believer to do. Thy will be done in my life. Thy will be done in my life. Lord, thy will be done in my life. This is how Christians walk. We come to God with our desires and then we arrange scriptures that will force him to have to give us our desires and we are afraid of telling him nevertheless Lord this is my desire but what is your opinion we don't want it when you can say nevertheless Jesus is Lord of your life Lord I want to buy this house but nevertheless I've died to my will Koinonia please hear me I bring you to a place of power tonight when everything about your life revolves around the purposes of the kingdom where he becomes Lord over your life. Are we together? Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. So when you have your ambitions, this is how I want my life to be. This is how I want my ways to be. And God says, whatever it is, this is my plan for you. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord. Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you, you, a future. You have trusted people who don't have guarantee over your life. Why not hand everything over to him? Take now thy only son, whom thou lovest, and offer him as a burnt offering. Your journey to power is a dream until you can sacrifice all to him. Not sacrifice some. Not sacrifice the most important ones. Everything. That you get to a point today where if God says empty your, your bank account, yes sir. You get to a point where God says sow your car or your house, yes sir. Many carnal people will insult you and call you stupid. Where God sits down and God says look promise. I want you to get up now and go to Togo. Your life from March starts in Togo. Go and stay there. For as long as it is him, when you have lost the ability to tell God, no, he is Lord of your life. That's when you will see the power of God. That's when you will speak and have him back you. Not just because somebody laid hands on you. You know, you've heard me say it in Koinonia many times. Hold on that so many people i'm sure some of you are waiting now after service to see me and as soon as you see me you want to hold my shoe it's not there the power is not in the shoe you can carry it and go with it it's not in the shoe the power is not even in my hands coming on you the power is in a posture in the realm of the spirit a posture of complete surrender the day i stop that i will never see that power in my life again are we together Jesus, be Lord of my life. Don't just say, I, I, Lord, I know you too. You know you are Lord. He said, don't, I don't know. If you say, I am Lord, I am watching. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? And will not do, do, obedience, obedience, obedience. This is where greed comes from. This is where selfishness comes from. This is why many people are poor. It's not because they are not business people. It's not because of this and that, all kinds of things. You know, people read all kinds of business books. Listen, let me tell you something. You know that Kononia is full of entrepreneurs here and there. There are millionaires in this place, silent millionaires just sitting looking around. They are very blessed people in this place. But I can tell you this, much more than business acumen or whatever it is, if God cannot get your heart, you are a joker as far as impact in the kingdom is concerned. So if God has declared for us as a family of faith that this is our year of triumph, 
then we must get to a point in our lives where all everybody say all say it say all all you have surrendered your will to the extent that if God looks at you and says no marriage you say Kai God this is painful oh, but your will be done I just said married someone. I mean, I felt the shock. It just entered some of us. I, 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 I rebuked that one. That apostle, you are going too far. Just. Abba. Lord, you have everything in this ministry. There is no instruction you will give us that we will not do. You ask the leaders. There is nothing God says to be done. That will not be done. If God says empty all the ministry account savings reserves anything. Monday morning. It's me that will supervise it. It will go. You can publish it in the newspaper and say look. Stupid men of God are here again. No problem. Let the stupidity yield results. We are too carnal. That's why we don't see the power of God. There's too much carnality. Sensually driven driven by intellect oh you know if you add a plus b we are intelligent being c plus no 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 when you come to the kingdom the word of god is your modus operandi you have to live by it find out what happened to the lives of people who obeyed god in scripture mad instructions but they obeyed and god vindicated them and blessed them koinonia please hear me you must rise to a point in the name of Jesus Christ where nothing becomes too much for you to give him. I'm showing you where the devil is destroying you. Do you know why many people are poor? Because they have not handed the affairs of their finances to God. Believe me, recession is biting people, lashing out on people. And the simple reason is they have not handed over their finances to God. You believe your survival comes through your job, so it will punish you. You believe your survival comes through your uncle. So in the day you try to call your uncle and he does not pick, he said, No, nothing will kill my uncle. He has to remain alive to take care of me. You are trusting a man. Woe unto any man who puts his strength in a man. You believe what I'm telling you? This is how the Lord trained me. Son. If you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. That's what the Lord said to me. It's a promise. And he's kept it. He's kept it. Everything God gives me is not a problem for him because he knows that it belongs to him. Can God give you something and take it back? You know, it's like our little ones here. You can give them something now. They will collect and you say, give me back and they will refuse. That's how many of us are. Oh God, give me divine health. And then he says, all right, can you use it for my house? I say, no, oh God, now that I'm, I mean, uh. Esther used her beauty for the glory. When he became Lord over her beauty, she became queen. Everything Jesus becomes Lord over prospers. Whatever he's not Lord over suffers. It's a law. Everything Jesus is allowed to become Lord over prosperous to be lord is not just to declare and say lord uh -uh. to be lord means you are willing to abide by his terms over that affairs so over your finances when you say jesus is lord what you are saying is as far as kingdom finance is concerned i am ready to live by all the principles so you tithe in a delight some way when you carry your tithe to the house of God you don't frown as if you are going to bribe God Jesus I thank you for the privilege of bringing a tenth when you are sowing a seed when you are giving you are knowing that I'm opening the floodgates of heaven and Lord I thank you not that you are saying God this money I'm giving if no return comes uh -uh. he is Lord whether he blesses me or not believe me I cannot accuse him. What will be the accusation? What will be the accusation? That God is not faithful? If I die of sickness today, the last word that will come out of my mouth is, Lord, you are the healer. And then I'll rest. Society, listen, is full of people with high blood pressure. Do you know what causes high blood pressure? Ask the doctors, they will tell you because you are in charge of your own world and there is pressure to make it work 
I have to pay the school fees of my child. What will people say if I cannot pay it? And so you go around putting yourself in trouble. No, no, I am, I am 40 years at my age. I should have a car. So I have to get a car. I have to hustle around. And so you are trying and somebody will dupe you and you come back and almost high blood pressure. No, no, no. People cannot say I'm buried. I've been married for five years. Small, small boys and girls are now giving birth. Me, that I'm like their mother, I will do anything. And you go and meet a herbalist and you land in trouble. You see how the lack of surrender to God is the reason for stress. I've preached this again and again and I will repeat it. Brothers and sisters, there is a place in Christ where men can be free. I bring you to the place of freedom where you hand over everything about your life and rest. You are carrying a load that is too much for you. This year, I must build a house. Whether the devil likes it or not, a good plan. But you are now trying to do it by the strength of the flesh. You now go and borrow money from the bank. As soon as you borrow money from the bank, they now steal it. You are in trouble. No house, no money. High blood pressure starts. And then the devil says, okay, let me do. Go and borrow another one. You get into trouble. By August, you are almost dying. You can't get up in the morning and breathe well. You see someone of 27 looking like, like 59. You ask him what is happening in Nigeria. No, it's not Nigeria. It is your understanding. Because there are still happy people in this country. Is God speaking to us? There are many students under pressure. I must get a job by myself. I must work service. I'm, no, 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 no. See, I want you to be, look, trust God's responsibility over your life. A man can receive nothing except it is given to him. If God does not give you a wife, you can't marry. Well, you can marry, but what you will be responsible for whoever and whatever you marry. If except the Lord builds the house if God does not give you a job you can lobby your way and get a job that will punish you your joy leaves from the day you get that job it's only God that can give you a ministry you can organize people who will steal from you, criticize you they are the ones who will pay people in the newspaper to say let's confess one day we went to the back of one fence and he rubbed one oil on my face the same people I trust in him. I've handed my entire life to him. Such a realm of freedom. You put pressure on his integrity through your obedience. Lord, I obey you. If nothing happens, I said it in one of the meetings in Koinonia, never claim to be giving God the glory when you are the one taking the shame. Never claim to be giving God the glory when you are the one taking the shame. We live in a society where we are so shame conscious. Ah, look at the shame they have brought to me. That's why you will suffer for nothing. Shame, that word is a, is a word that you hear being used everywhere. Let them not say I'm not rich. Ah, sh I don't want shame. So you go and borrow money and buy bottles of minerals. And then from there the person says, look, the next day I won't talk to you again. I'm coming to come and carry my bottles in the presence of your visitors. Leave everything to God. Tonight we are going to do a handover ceremony. Not from one power to the other. Hand over of your life and destiny and say, Lord, this load is killing me. I can't sleep. God designed sleep. There are many of us here, we've not slept for days. It's not just demon spirits. Stress. Stress. You see a pastor of 100 members not sleeping. You ask him where he said, where will we get generator by Sunday? Mr. Man, you didn't call yourself. Calm down. Five minutes in the presence of God. God will get up and speak to someone. You want to borrow gen, God will bl bl instruct somebody to buy it and give you. These are my contemplations. Please, I don't want you to take what I'm saying lightly. The secret to the power of God upon my life, aside from my love for him, is my total surrender of my will and everything in my life. I have pleaded with God, crying in the secret place, that whatever is in my life that I cannot give God, I've begged him to never give me. It is the favor I have pleaded with God to do for me. That Lord, if there is anything in my life that I will not be able to hand over to you, may it never come. That's the way of saving me. 
finances, ministry prestige, anointing, titles, reputation, influence. What is it that you cannot give God? It's the reason why the devil will destroy you. Brothers, you will hand over everything. There are many gentlemen now. There are predominantly young people here. And many brothers are out to take this year of triumph and make sure they are established. They want to force this door to open. No, you use keys. You don't use force. No, I must start ending. I'm not a small boy again. I'm, I'll be hearing this message. I must put it to work. You're about to put yourself in big trouble. I hand over my life to you. Jesus, if you don't help me, no one can help me. I will obey you and declare your lordship by allowing the word of God to dominate in me. If you have said that tithing brings favor, I will tithe and nothing will stop me. If praising you is the secret to breakthrough, I will praise you like a madman. That's his lordship over the life. Everything you believe the word of God can give you, have you applied it? Jesus is not Lord. I told you the, the, the dominion of the word in your life and the freedom with which you give the principles of the kingdom to find expression in you is the measure of the lordship of Christ in your life. I've come tonight to bring a very, very simple but profound secret to you. Koinonia, make Jesus Lord of your life experientially, not by talk. Hand over your house to him and see whether you will beg for food. Hand over your children to him and see whether he cannot pay their school fees. Hand over your education and see whether they will drive you out of the university because there's no school fees. He says, come unto me all ye that labor. Hand over your intention to build a house to him and watch somebody build a house and bring the, the, the key and give it to you. You have been trying to buy a car of 1.5 million. It's almost killing you. You raise 700,000, the devourer eats it. You raise 500,000, the devourer eats it. Why not go to God and say, Lord, there is a way this thing is done. I come to you. I come to you. Help me. And the Lord will tell you A, B, C, D. And you want a car of 1 million, God will give you a car of 10 million. And people will look at you and say, you are a thief. No, you are not a thief. He is Lord of my life. When he's Lord of your life, he takes care of you. By God's grace, I have a few people that I take care of, like my children, and I am ever faithful to their lives. Their school fees, their well-being, it is my responsibility as a father figure over their life to take care of them. And I make sure, whether they deserve it or not, I give them. Not necessarily just because I love them alone. It's a show of responsibility. So when you hand over everything to God, he will pay your bills. You hand over everything to God, he will put laughter in your face. You hand over everything from, to God, he will shield you from recession. There are people already, this February, they have received rewards that even if they got by December, they will be happy. Already. Because they handed everything over to God. I've handed Koinonia and I do that to him all the time. When I'm preparing for every service, I say, Lord Jesus, I am before you. I'm a small child before you. There are people listening, thousands of people waiting to be blessed all over the world. And Lord, I'm asking that you only use me. Speak through me. And I carry that sincere heart and come before him. And the results are remarkable. Results that not even me myself can account for. This is the key to ease in life. Surrender all. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you, I'm withholding nothing, withholding nothing, I'm withholding nothing, withholding nothing. sing it, I surrender all, I surrender all, hand over the ministry and rest. Hand over the business and rest. Hand over the children's school fees. Hand over your business and rest. Withholding nothing. Sing it one more time to him. Hand over the relationship and rest. Hand over the marriage and rest. 
hand over the projects and rest hand over your desire for the anointing rest 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 will you give your life away that's what he's asking you tonight koinonia will you give your life away so he it's your turn to respond to him now Lord, I give myself away. I give myself away. But, Apostle, you don't understand. If I don't pay the rent by tomorrow, they are going to drive me. If God wakes that landlord from sleep, that's only when he can come to you. The landlord will sleep for eight hours. What guarantee does he have that he will wake up? Brothers and sisters, listen. I want you to trust God. The carnality has killed unbelief from believers. I trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Whatever God cannot give me cannot be given by any man. No matter who deceives you. Some may trust in horses. Some may trust in chariots. He said, but we will trust in the name of our God. Hallelujah. Get to a point of reckless abandon. You hand over everything and say, Lord, I'm tired of sleepless nights. You are not the first God has called into ministry. Lord, what if people don't come for this program? My reputation is at stake. Uh -uh, uh -uh. You are the one who called yourself. Lord, what if I don't make it? People would think I'm not successful. Yourself, your flesh, your ego is the very reason you will never step into it. I show you the mystery of ease submission to the lordship of christ jesus submitted himself philippians 2 5 obedient unto death when there is nothing else to withhold from him then he will give you everything everything Kai. everything everything this god can surprise men have you not read it in your bible listen listen you know i have watched and, and let me say this with all humility I have watched the way God is raising mighty people in this ministry. Especially in the area of finances. In the last three or four months, I have been shocked at how many millionaires God has produced in this ministry. Raising, I'm talking of ordinary people. Not just people who have any necessary acumen. Because he found men who can say, Lord, everything that you have, everything I have belongs to you. Trust me, let me be your treasurer. The last treasurer betrayed you. Let me be another one. Trust me. And God says, you are doing this for me? There are people entering unbelievable dimensions of the anointing. You know why? Because they have said, Lord, bless me. It's not about myself. It's for your glory. Bless me. I surrender my crowns. Men may clap for me, but I consciously take those crowns and drop them. Every time, especially after the miracle service, no matter how late, when I go home, after everyone has gone and left me alone, I never lie down and sleep. I have my little chair that is like my altar. I just kneel down and I say, I kneel to the doer of these wonders. People are in their houses discussing me and say, my God, what a great man. And I kneel down. Sometimes people pile all kinds of seeds. There are all kinds of envelopes and I just drop all of them on the ground. I said, Lord, this belongs to you. They gave the wrong person, but please make it right because I hand it over to you. It belongs to you. And God says, you do this for me, ready for the next level. Some of us have stayed in one level of the anointing forever. You are anointed, but there is no growth because that is the level God has seen that he will be glorified. When he takes you to another level, you become Lord of yourself. We are going to pray. I told you it's a handover service tonight. Lay down your burdens. It's killing you. Lay down your burdens. It's killing you. What you are praying for, somebody got it today as a testimony. Why not you?
please listen to what I'm telling you and you will watch God bless you is the antidote to recession you will get up and move around you are sleeping God will wake somebody else and say have you considered my servant promise I want you not just to bless him one time but so 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 amount from your salary goes to him for as long as I bless you and he's minding himself this is the mystery some of us walk in that people just look at our lives and say how are these people doing it it's the mystery of death to allow him be Lord first Corinthians 15 and verse 55 first Corinthians 15 55 Apostle Paul now oh death where is your sting he's making a mockery of death here based on a revelation the same way Elijah made a mockery of the prophets this is a mockery he's making of death oh death where is thy sting he says and oh grave where is thy victory it means that there is something that he understood about the sacrifice of Jesus and the power of his resurrection write this down the key to ultimately destroying death is for sin to be completely absent in the human race the key to ultimately destroying the power of death if you want is for sin to be completely absent in the human race hmm. this is very powerful the key to ultimately destroying death or the power of death is for sin to be completely absent in the human race look up let me teach you something this thing called sin more than an act is a nature and based on the deception of satan and something about the way god created the system that sin passes through the blood are we together so as a woman is pregnant that baby in her womb already carries the nature of sin so the baby also carries the possibility of dying even though you have not been born are we together now death has a mandate by reason of the fall of man and the mandate and the condition is anywhere you see sin whether sin as a nature through the bloodline or sin as acted out by the physical body you are authorized to take that individual mm. and from the fall of adam death effortlessly was able to take people because he found out that there, there was no exception as far as the absence of sin is concerned that even the most righteous person had within his nature by blood are we together now so we became slaves to death now when you understand this concept of death you will now begin to appreciate what happened with the coming of jesus right from his birth are you seeing the reason now why a man a mortal man did not play the role in jesus's coming because remember the seed is transferred through the man the woman only receives are we together now and if a mortal man played that role then jesus would not be able to save sinners because he himself would be in need of a savior that's why the holy ghost played that fatherly role because biology teaches us that the blood from a child comes from his father is that true now this young boy grows to become an adult and something very strange happened from the time he was announced satan found out that all over the earth there was only one person who stood as human even though he was god and when he came to him he found exactly what he saw before he attacked adam how did this happen that this person there was no nature of sin he says satan cometh to me 
understand the process that leads to redemption now are we together now don't think death tried jesus but there was no basis remember the rule the law is that you can only use the power to kill when you find the nature of sin in that individual now death came to jesus once and again and it had no power over him the same way it had no power over adam before the fall what was the crime the crime was that jesus could not die why because he did not have the nature of sin that meant there was no possibility for him to go to hell because the only person who can go to hell is the person who death kills just just take it easy you are going to understand what i'm teaching you now oh death where is your sting the Bible says, he who knew no sin became sin. So, if Jesus walked upon the earth and did not go to heaven till now, he would not die. Nothing would be able to touch him because that nature was not in him. Death will pass him like this, he will pass death because the nature that authorizes the operation of death, Jesus did not come from Adam. No. Everyone who came directly from Adam was already subject to death. First and most important, spiritual death. Then the physical deterioration that happened by reason of the reign of death over a long period of time. Are we learning now? There was no way Jesus would have saved man as being sinless because there was no way he would be able to go to the grave. And remember, the problem was he came not to die for himself. He was not the one who had any problem. The problem was man and these four elements needed to be dealt with. Number one, sin. Number two, talk to me. Number three, the grave. Number four, that means he had to assume a position that would qualify him to pass through all four. But as he was sinless, sin would not be able to touch him. Death would not be able to take him. The grave would not be able to take him. And hell, they, they, because they are all related. It is sin that leads to death. Death takes you to the grave. Grave takes you to Hades, the place of the dead. Now he came as the sinless one. And death would try and say, I cannot find what gives me the authorization. Because sin, the nature, is what gives me the authorization to destroy the human spirit. Satan cometh to me, the Bible says, and it does not find anything. But because his agenda was to come and save us, the Bible says we did our best and death still took us effortlessly. So the only way people were preserved from death in the old testament was through covenants god would have an agreement with them and give them terms so they will obey those terms and on account of those terms they would have an immunity against death till the assignment was over but that permanent victory over death it was not possible now you will know who jesus is and you will know what he did when he came follow the story now when jesus left heaven watch this remember the instruction in genesis 2 17 he told man the instruction was given to who help me man the instruction was not given to angels the instruction was not given to lower creatures the instruction was given to man in the day that you eat of that fruit in the day you walk in disobedience something will happen to you and he spoke to man he said you shall surely die that means the moment you violate that there is no possibility of reconnecting with me at this level again and so if god were to punish anyone it would be man that's why jesus had to now become a man 
he couldn't save man as God God does not sin God does not die God does not go to the grave and God does not go to hell this is for men and so he became a man but this time around he came as a sinless man it was a mystery that men did not understand angels did not understand even his apostles did not understand so he walked upon the earth the bible clearly tells us that jesus the son of the living god was sinless and i hope that you know that sin does not just affect the body god's focus in dealing with the sin problem is not just the body because in any case like you'll be learning this body is just a container the real thing is your spirit are we together now now let me teach you something very powerful and then we'll find somewhere to pray hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15 hebrews chapter 4 for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity he says but in all ways tempted like us yet without sin that means death kept coming to look around how do i get this man but because there was no sin not in his nature death could not touch him are you seeing why the moment he became seen he didn't spend up to three days death took him immediately because he had been looking for him and it's like you've been searching for something and finally you found it it was like a dream come true this sinless man what gave him that authorization he had now become seen with speed death took him only to watch the shock that Paul gave us that will happen in hell because Jesus had to look for a way to get down there and in this condition he would never be able to die he would never be able to go to the grave and remember everything he was doing was for me and for you are we together so to qualify Jesus Christ based on all I have taught you now to qualify Jesus to die he had to become sin and there was no way of carrying the human blood because the idea of sin is not just physical blood transfusion no there was no way you could reverse the process of making a human male become his father again joseph was just a caretaker it was the holy ghost that played his father the role so he now introduced a concept like i've taught you called the holy communion because the Bible says he became sin. How did he become sin? John chapter 6. John chapter 6. I'll begin my reading from verse 53. John 6, 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, pay attention, and drink his blood, you have no life in you are you seeing this now this is a very powerful concept next verse who so eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood had eternal life and the possibility of resurrection can happen to that person this is what jesus was teaching he's saying listen in this your state if you die that's the end of it for you but there is something I want to do. I want to make something happen to you such that resurrection can be possible for you. Are we together? That I will raise him up on the last day. 55. For my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed. 56 now. He that eateth my flesh, this is the key verse now, and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me and i in him i've taught you this right the doctrine of interpenetration the mystery by which two entities become one that's the same mystery by which a man and a woman from different locations parents now are called one it's what brings one plus one equal to one jesus is teaching them here that it is possible for me to enter you and you enter me Are we together please help those under the anointing 
so when they were taking the communion let me tell you what they were doing remember according to scripture it took eating or interacting to partake of that nature of sin now it had to do with a meal something was happening the disciples did not even know what they were doing follow carefully now as we unravel the mystery that leads to the resurrection he broke the bread which he said was him he said all of you eat it you are not just eating it for yourself you are representing men i can't gather the whole world in a meeting but i can use the number 12 because 12 is a covenant number for government you are representing the entire human race listen carefully in this communion so when they ate it he now said one more drink this cup this is my blood the moment that happened jesus said all right thank you you will see me shortly he was on his way to gethsemane they didn't even know what he went to do he now said father based on this mystery called the communion it is legal for me now i have made myself one with man that means i can transfer the sin whether i transfer my righteousness to him or sin is transferred to me remember the mystery now remember in marriage when a woman marries a man she doesn't have to look like him she now carries his son name immediately now he sat at the communion and what was happening is that man was giving him authority because the earth belongs to man and he came even though he was god he was man he had to find a way to negotiate with men to give him a legal basis to carry their sin so that death will now look for him now watch this please watch this look up please let me tell you what satan and demons saw in the realm of the spirit they only knew that there was a meeting going on in the upper room i hope you know that's where the last supper two happened and as soon as jesus came out satan saw that this is not the same person they had always seen what was changing something was happening to him that thing satan sees in every human being he finally saw it on jesus when jesus went to gethsemane most people thought he just went to pray no something was happening there you know what was happening there it was right there the holy ghost had to leave him because the bible calls him the second adam and the holy spirit who was a life-giving spirit when the holy spirit lives in him satan life and death light and darkness cannot dwell so when he said take this cup off me the cup was not dying on the cross for the first time the holy ghost will have to leave him to suffer alone the same way he left adam you see now listen carefully so right from gethsemane he was no longer jesus christ no he was now the man the second adam so judas comes and judas does not even know what is possessing him and satan looks at jesus and said something changed i'm sure in his mind he will say who tempted you that you became sinful this cheap not knowing that it's called the hidden wisdom of god so now that one's invisible deity now gave himself freely that was why when they caught him all together the disciples thought he would shake them and throw them but now it seems like he was just a weak person and they took him around satan could not believe it what in the world and i knew that i may defeat him but this is the son of god what i could not do in heaven is now happening cheaply i was cast down because of this agenda somebody is going to bow to me and jesus kept going like a sheep to the slaughter now condition one had been met he had become sin automatically death now had the authority are you seeing now so satan started moving through pontius pilate and through all look at how satan was determined do you know what it means for a whole city to suddenly hate you that's hard work from the realm of the spirit satan was making sure that nobody shows any mercy now that this guy is seen i don't know what else he can do let me kill him fast because satan did not know that if you resurrect listen the idea he had seen resurrection but the way resurrection happens is that somebody in the earth realm must call you are we together now 
he must call your spirit back into your body and satan knew that if jesus left nobody nobody so jesus was led and death was doing to him what he did to adam when he hung upon that cross condition number two the second element he had become sin and he died hmm. you know what happened imagine the silence in heaven because the angels did not understand this they were just obeying instructions given to them what in the world is this god you turn your face on the son of god and now he died hell was rejoicing and his body was hung there joseph of arimathea said please don't leave this body here he didn't know what was moving him to ask because the third element was about to be conquered the grave now the issue of sin he had become sin now he had, ah my god he had died and when they took him to that tomb and kept him there they rolled the stone and they closed it physical realm you are done with your own assignment now let's see what happens let me tell you this because you see the bible does not and i've read my bible i don't mean to argue this but i know from the authority of scripture with the exception of two people who were still even learning about them enoch and elijah the bible does not record that anybody before jesus christ died directly and went to heaven where the father is and stayed there you will not find it in your bible no no the bible says they died with a promise that something will happen because throughout their lifetime they obeyed the instruction that was given to them so it was taken as a token of righteousness and they say you wait here a day will come something will happen that will make reference to your obedience and it will bail you out now jesus is about to visit the third element the grave when he was done with the grave let me tell you what the grave is number one the grave is a place where i wrote here the physical remains of a deceased is deposited could be a ditch could be a pit physically speaking now a grave is where the physical remains of a deceased person is deposited but the spiritual meaning of a grave listen carefully a grave is a spiritual passage a grave is a spiritual passage from the physical realm into the realm of the spirit it's a doorway that leads from the physical realm to the physical to the spiritual realm number three the grave is also where resurrection begins very important information about the grave the grave starts resurrection starts right at the grave lazarus woke up from the grave before he came out so a place where the physical remains of a deceased is deposited a passageway from the realm of the spirit to from the physical realm to the realm of the spirit are we together the grave now the fourth element i want us to look at very quickly is hell there are seven words seven greek expressions of the word hell but there are two that are most important for our discussion one is called gehenna gehenna is spelled g-e-h-e-n-n-a and gehenna was not a spiritual place it was a physical understanding gehenna in ancient times outside of jerusalem when you study bible history there was a place where they set criminals on fire and they would burn them and throw their dead bodies you understand we see a, an example of that in most cities there are places where you see them heap rubbles and they can set it on fire that was where they called they called it hell but it was gehenna they would burn um criminals set them to ashes and then throw their bodies there you know 
to rot and decay and so on and so forth but there is another word called hades h-a-d-e-s hades is called the place of the dead hades the place of the dead psalm 16 and verse 10 psalm 16 and verse 10 psalm 16 and verse 10 for thou will not leave my soul in hell the psalmist was speaking prophetically about the things that would happen neither will thou suffer the holy one to see corruption the word hell there is the word hades second scripture psalm 139 and verse 8 psalm 139 and verse 8 he was speaking and said where can i hide from your presence and he said if i ascend up into heaven thou art there and if i descend to the to hell the word there again is hades the place of the dead thou art there so we know that there is a place called the place of the dead so jesus died where do you think he went to he could not have gone to heaven because anybody carrying the nature of sin cannot go to heaven in fact anyone who has not been redeemed cannot go to heaven and until jesus came there was nobody who had enjoyed the blessings of redemption to go to heaven otherwise the bible would never call him the firstborn among the begotten he had to be the person to lead that way are we together now so jesus went to hell my apologies i don't know what is um, affecting the whole projection but let me read hebrews chapter 2 let me use my hebrews chapter 2 from verse 14 Hebrews 2 14 I'll read it just listen for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood this is verse 14 now Hebrews 2 14 he also himself likewise took part of the same took part of the same means he became in their form spiritually now that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil and deliver them 15 now who through fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage so all that jesus did was so that he will finally go to the place of the dead the realm of the spirit and correct something that happened between satan and the first man Let's see what happened now. So, the gate that opens up the physical realm to the spiritual realm opened for Jesus. And the Bible says, my God, Paul was such an intelligent man. This was how this guy just sat down home, and he was just watching it like a video and now began to write it. You know what happened? The Bible says, when Jesus was going to go and join all those who had gone before him now, while he went there he was in hell and something began to happen seriously there satan was shocked to find out that although jesus was there he now tried to force him to bow listen carefully bowing talks of acknowledging authority are we together now yes jesus now went in the strength of man adam and all the cohorts of hell were forcing him to bow to the authority of satan paul said that he made a public show of them now hold on let me explain to you what that means remember jesus said in the day you eat it you shall surely die that means god's word should not fall to the ground every man should die do you know what that means it doesn't mean to stop living physically it means there is no possibility for man to be connected to him again 
so jesus now comes representing the entire creation in that covenant and went through the punishment that man should go through and the bible says he shall see the travail of his soul this was a revelation given to isaiah the prophet that he shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied according to the teachings of great men like ew kenyon he now says when the legal claims of justice was now paid for you see that now the father's heart was satisfied jesus made a public show of them he says triumphing over them in it now the final battle he goes to satan who the bible called the god of this world who had collected the keys of dominion from adam through deception and jesus collected that key and apostle peter teaches us that he now went somewhere that is called the bosom of abraham because the the bosom of abraham is not heaven oh i hope you know that there's no such place called the bosom of Abraham in heaven. Mm -mm. There is a throne. The Bible describes about 12 or 13 things that we know and see in heaven. The bosom of Abraham is not there. Apostle Peter said Jesus went there and preached the gospel to them. And they believed. What was the gospel? Listen, I'm here with you now. Remember the promise he made to you through Abraham that in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. He was not talking of money. He was saying, Abraham, because of your covenant, the Jewish nation will come out and Jesus will come out of that nation and whoever believes just like you believe, it will be credited to him for righteousness. That promise, I have come. Do you believe? They say, we believe. They say, come, follow me. And that was how they started going out. It's in your Bible. It's in your Bible. After the defeat that happened in hell, Jesus led captivity. John, give me Ephesians. My spirit is fired up. Ah, yeah. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Let's start from verse 18. Ephesians chapter 4. Did I get that right? Ephesians 4 from verse, um, he led captivity captive. Help me. Look for it for us, media. It should be helping me as I'm preaching. Ephesians, let me pull it up. He led captivity captive and he gave gift unto men. verse 8 thank you Ephesians 4 and verse 8 wherefore saith he when he ascended up on high he did what he led captivity captive in fact let's go to verse 6 let's start from there one God one father of all who is above all and through all and in you all now verse 7 pay attention he says but unto everyone is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ uh-huh wherefore he said when he ascended on high he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men verse 9 powerful information now now he that ascended but what is it that he also descended first to the what lower parts of the earth so jesus went there he's describing it now verse 10 and he descended and then when he was done he now came to the earth he ascended to finish his high priestly duty and then he came to charge the disciples this is the protocol that's what happened so he came out and the bible your bible says that when jesus was done now the issue of sin death the grave hell was about to be do you know that if Jesus did not resurrect, that means that number one, death still had power because the last enemy to be destroyed is death. And that also means that he's not exerted power over death, over Satan. It means that he was trapped in hell. So the Bible says on the third day, let me hurry up, by the authority of the Father, resurrection. When he resurrected first, 
the bible did not say he resurrected alone the departed saints that they resurrected with him and walked around the streets of jerusalem and all men saw them are we together now all men saw them now when jesus resurrected i'm hurrying up because of time the bible tells us that mary saw him and she wanted to come and touch him she said rabboni he said don't touch me that means i'm not yet done with my i just came out of the grave but there is something i need to settle he now went to heaven paul was shown this when he taught the hebrew church that jesus now went to heaven he was no longer a savior in heaven he was a high priest and the lamb he carried his blood into that tabernacle are we together i've taught you and now poured that blood upon the altar to atone for the sin of man once and for all the moment he finished listen carefully the moment he finished triumphantly a coronation service was held in heaven for him the lord said to my lord sit down at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 now let this mind be in you please give it to us which was also in christ jesus verse 6 it says that although being in the form of god thought it not robbery to be equal with god but for your sake and my sake verse 7 he made himself of no reputation took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men verse 8 and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became what obedient to death think about it obedient not obedient to the father obedient to death is another word of saying he became sin because whoever has that nature of sin is a slave to death he became obedient to death even the death on the cross verse 9 wherefore god had so highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name at the resurrection of jesus watch this now a coronation service was held for him and when that coronation service was held that was when he was given the name lord l o r d now but the advantage is that he was not lord alone he was not king alone remember our communion mystery that everything he was doing you were doing it in him that's the part satan did not know because if all of us were to be saved every one of us will have to do what jesus did for ourselves and jesus went through all that and when he resurrected by the glory of the father satan was surprised because he found out now listen carefully he found out that there was a possibility that had come from the resurrection that man would not be able to have what was that possibility that because jesus rose again man is not only saved but man also will rise like him not just spiritually first like arising from the dead but that physically every time you receive eternal life into your spirit there are many things that you receive number one is the life of god but number two you receive something called the power of resurrection the power of resurrection part of it is for this age but part of it will be activated when the trumpet sounds follow me carefully we're discussing the doctrine of resurrection now there is a part of the power of resurrection that is in us but is not yet activated it will be activated the moment the sound of the trumpet is the signal that was given that the moment that sound comes everyone whether you are alive or you are dead in christ that software becomes activated and every the grave no matter where you died you must resurrect once you are in christ honor will be given to those who died in christ first we call this sleeping and then we who are alive and remain together we will be caught up with him paul said that i may know him and the power of his resurrection let me tie up one or two things listen carefully there is a law 
according to hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27 that it is appointed unto man to die once why is it appointed to man to die because of the original sin of man even though you are saved spiritually unfortunately this physical body still carries with it that nature of sin and that is the reason why deterioration are we together now and all these other things that happen to man now your spirit will never never have to be separated with god again because you have received jesus that oneness that union a reversal of what happened to adam but listen carefully it is appointed unto men please leave that scripture hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27 once to die everybody say it is appointed it's not what you chose it's an appointment and it is appointed unto man to die once but after this that means death is not the end of all things listen carefully that though our outward man perish paul said but that there is something happening to our spirit man and that the real concern for the believer understand resurrection now is not so much your body paul is saying look relative to what has really happened to you the physical body is not so much the issue no matter how long you wait it is still appointed unto all men to die once you may ask a question and say apostle but how about enoch and elijah these are two men that the bible does not record that they died listen to me hear me i assure you i don't want to go into eschatology now but all of them will still taste death it is appointed unto man to die once the question is what is this death that he's talking about does it mean to get to a point where your body lies down no it is appointed unto all men listen carefully that there will be an event in their life when the spirit will be separated with this body if it happens earlier through what you call natural death or at the blast of the trumpet the bible says this is not the body that will carry the spirit it will still be changed within a moment a twinkling of an eye there are people who are not going to die physically they will not enter the grave however they will still taste of that event with that change that happens are you getting what i'm saying now this is very powerful it is appointed unto men to die once when jesus returns he's not going to find an empty earth there will still be people there but those who are alive physically and those who have gone before us the bible says honor will be given to them to rise up first resurrection and the possibility of that resurrection is because jesus now led the way and because we were in him when he died if he resurrected there is authorization for us to also resurrect are we together jesus could go to hades because death could now kill him he went there when he paid the price of justice he resurrected by the power of god he conquered the grave he conquered sin he conquered death and with that victory he now handed it to the believer listen carefully so the completion of the entire journey of redemption is not just giving your life to jesus it's also understanding that one day one day that you have defeated death both spiritually and physically and that even if your outward man is ever shed away for your spirit to live you find hope because even though you die to die in christ means that that software was still in your spirit and that when the signal of the trumpet comes another body will be given to you and that spirit will return back that means everybody who died in christ we will still have that glorious reunion the resurrection now let me teach you another very powerful concept jesus himself was teaching john chapter 11 and verse 25 jesus said resurrection is a person not just an event 
the woman he was talking to was saying i know they've taught us in the temple that at the last day there will be such and such a resurrection jesus said no i am the resurrection and i am the life he said he that believeth in me read it please though he were dead yet shall he live what is this that jesus is saying jesus is saying even though i have conquered death and hell with respect to your mortal body listen carefully it is still possible that this body can transit and he teaches us in his Pauline epistles that you never call a believer's transition death you call it what the idea of sleeping is that that person is not lost he's going to wake up even if he slept in 1904 it's just a long sleep he will wake up again this is what the bible calls the blessed hope the blessed hope is the hope of resurrection not just the hope of conquering sin and satan whatever it is so as we sojourn in this life as we celebrate easter on one hand we thank god for the victory that we now enjoy in this life but there is a blessed hope you know what that hope is that no matter what happens whether in life or in death we have already received that software that makes for resurrection first thessalonians chapter 4 i'll discuss one mystery and then we'll begin to pray first thessalonians please chapter 4 paul began to teach us himself about the idea From verse 13 we're reading 13 to 18 first thessalonians 4 13 okay but i would not have you ignorant say knowledge paul wants to give us knowledge i would not have you ignorant brethren concerning them which are what are you seeing that paul uses a term sleep please let me encourage you here every time you stand before a dead body of someone who received jesus christ in his lifetime i want you to know that you are simply looking at the remains the remains that body you see will be replaced by another body it does not matter how it was battered it does not matter what happened that body will be will be given another body and the bible says that person is only sleeping I would not have you ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which do not have hope 14 for if we believe that jesus died and rose again everybody say died and rose again one more time say died and rose again your gospel must never end with jesus dying alone the resurrection and his exaltation at the right hand of the father is what completes the gospel even so because of that them which also that sleep in jesus will god bring with him 15. he now teaches us this is what will happen this i say unto you by the word of the lord that which which are alive and remain unto the coming of the lord shall not prevent them which are asleep now notice how paul is saying asleep asleep 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ, he's explaining it now, shall rise first, not only first. 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. The word caught up together is the word that we know to now to be rapture. With them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is what Jesus died to achieve. That eternal separation. Notice the Bible does not talk about heaven here. It says be with the Lord. The location is not the important thing. It is the person we will be caught up in the air 
and we will be with the Lord where I am there you may be also because you will be learning that heaven is not the only place God stays there is something called a new Jerusalem and he's coming back to the recreated earth and when he comes back because of that covenant of oneness wherever he is he said I am the resurrection and the life if I resurrect you you will be with me everywhere I am there you will be also can I tell you this a day is going to come on earth look at me ladies and gentlemen I'm sure it will not be very long from now we will wake up one morning like every other day don't you think you are just going to hear bah. no if you didn't hear it and you are remaining it means you didn't make it look up let me teach you something laugh but take it serious because it will happen it's not a parable let me tell you what will happen the bible says in a moment in a twinkling of an eye please blink your eye for me that's it that is how fast it will happen repeat it again have you ever had an event so miraculous and so sudden it didn't say in five minutes in a moment a twinkling of an eye an event will happen on earth that has never been recorded billions of graves will open in a moment loved ones some of them you have never seen them all these people these missionaries that died inside holes water all kinds of places you would see a glorious transition that resurrection and the bible says we who are alive and remain in a twinkling of an eye to look like we're all going together and we will wave this version of earth goodbye with all the nonsense and all the wickedness and the fuel crisis and all the trouble that keep plaguing people on earth rejoice only if you are saved because i'm about to tell you the other side of the story listen carefully the bible says in that moment i don't mean to scare you but please listen to the other version the greatest catastrophe more than world war ii is what will be happening coincidentally because when about 2.6 billion people professing christians exit this earth in a moment what if the person exiting is the pilot flying you what if the person exiting is the one responsible for some nuclear plant somewhere you think they will wait for you no i mean what i'm saying that moment just like this and that's it you will see bibles on earth you will see hymn books left in churches unfortunately there will still be many people in those buildings and they will say what has suddenly happened the Bible says two people will be lying together. One will leave and leave the other one there. Others will be grinding their thing to go and cook for their families. The other one will say, no more issue of cooking. I'm on my way going. And you will see that glorious exit. We will wave this version of earth goodbye. Do you know why? Because of the power of his resurrection. At that point, death will no longer have power over us we will not live by blood again no the reign of living by blood ends the moment that trumpet sounds the ministry of blood in our lives would have come to an end we will live by another life the reality the fullness of the earnest of that expectation that that ministry of the spirit the culmination of that salvation experience happens and we are with jesus and let me tell you this i don't mean to scare you it is that catastrophe on earth that will lead to the ministry of the antichrist are you seeing now the chaos in the earth will be too much there will be a need for a religious and a political leader to bring the earth in peace because the chaos will be too much nations and governments will crumble overnight and a world leader will come and say find peace 
his intelligence and his acumen, he will, he will bring a level of peace that you cannot imagine. And with that peace, the Bible says for a period of about three and a half years, and then he will unleash hell. Hell that will make World War II look like humanitarian services. I don't mean to scare you. This is the word of God. It's called written judgment. No prayer warrior can change it. All over the world and even in this place, you are listening to me. The resurrection is God's determination to see that we never end up in eternal damnation. Celebrating Easter by just eating chicken and jumping and saying, whoa, I'm happy, is a complete waste of that, that event. The ceremony of it is not where the power comes from. It is the commemoration of it. The commemoration of it means that you take to heart the significance of it. Someday, Jesus is going to come. What's that song in my spirit? Take it high for me, please. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You've forgotten it. Sing it, oh. Hallelujah, he arose. Hallelujah, he arose, the Prince of Peace arose. Hallelujah, he arose, so oh yes, so oh yes. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Oh yes, oh yes. And hallelujah, he arose. Here is my question when we all rise and this life is over as we know it no more banks no more universities no more oil and gas no more certificates no more going to the mall to buy anything all the terrorists will leave them there. I don't know who they will attack. <laughs> Everything you've been trying to hide in your house, you're about to go and leave it. The pit you dug in your house to hide money, you will leave it there as you go. Can I tell you, I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but some of you, as you are now, you are not going. I'm not a prophet of doom. It is by the integrity of God's word. There are people who will laugh at us when they hear us say these things as though we're just doing some spiritual gibberish. Can I tell you, everybody in hell is a believer. The only difference is that they believe too late. I don't want to scare you with all the eschatological realities that will happen after this first flight. That all those who do not make this first flight, let me tell you what will happen. The Bible says because of the torture and the persecution that will happen, that people will go to the mountain and beg death. This death you are running away from now. People will look for it and death will say, my ministry is over. Mm, I've not, I'm, I can't. People will beg death. When hell and everything to be unleashed to be unleashed. Now, listen, please. I didn't come just to scare you, nor did I come to flatter you and lie to you. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Some glad morning when this life is over I'll fly away When I die 
Hallelujah, by and by, I will fly away. Can I tell you this? The question I want to ask is some of you will be on your way going and you will look down and you will see your biological mother behind. Some of you will get up and you are already that power of resurrection is already in you but you will turn and see all your siblings they will say what is happening and you have to leave for many people it will be a service like this maybe it will even be a koinonia service just when i'm about to pick the mic and say hallelujah the only thing you will see is your mic dropping on the ground the fact that you can see it means you are in trouble can i tell you please look up by the privilege of god's grace and by reason of what i do i'm not a medical doctor but i have stood before many dead bodies in my life many i've been in a mortuary i've been locked in a mortuary every time i look at a dead body two things come to my mind number one every dead body also saw a dead body in his lifetime and now he is that dead body that others are looking at can i tell you this money will not resurrect you education will not resurrect you tithes and offerings will not resurrect you mm -mm. there is only one basis for the resurrection because he resurrected Jesus he's given me the basis to know that in life and in death death has been defeated spiritually and will be perfected at that last trump why did I come to teach you today so that as you celebrate Easter you only celebrate if that power of resurrection has been deposited in you by reason of acknowledging the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus and placing your faith now you can celebrate you can enjoy and know that I thank God for what has happened to me ladies and gentlemen for a long time we heard that Jesus is coming soon and for many people they are laughing coming soon 2,000 years there are two ways Jesus comes soon. He comes or you go. The day you leave, Jesus has come for you. Let me repeat. I'm not scaring you. You will live long. But can I tell you, even if you live 120 years, which is the benchmark we're giving, you can stretch through. Right? But I assure you by God, even Lazarus, who Jesus raised, still died. Everybody who was raised from the dead still died. So it is not just the physical living in this body. I am the resurrection and I am the life. You can hear this preacher preaching and just laugh and say, wow, he's preaching well. On that day, when we leave, this sermon will be behind to teach you. Don't give your life to Christ under cruelty of the wickedness that will bedevil this world when we are gone do you know what it means for the earth to be pitch darkness the bible teaches that the evangelists that will remain when we are gone are the jews because everyone who names the name of christ will be gone and it is only some of them who although they came from abraham do not believe this truth they will now go back the bible will suddenly become the bestseller after rapture everyone will be looking for the bible to check what else will happen we laughed at this group of people laughing at them and saying they were wasting their times everybody will pick bibles free and have to read and they will find it there people will cry and wail and say god come back they say no this second one it will not just be by you dying and going the trumpet has sounded it has sounded 
go and read your bible and see the torture that is going to happen to people on account of the antichrist thrown through fire going through all of this that you cannot buy or sell until you receive that mark on your forehead or on on the, the side of your hands and those who escape they will go to the mountain and say fall on us and it will not come the only way out will be matthiadom now you have a chance a cheap chance towards jesus i'm not scaring you it's not a lie it will happen there is no point sugarcoating it ladies and gentlemen it will happen the bible says if our hope is only in this life we are of all men most miserable for jesus to leave heaven and come and pay that price he knows what is at the other side of that disobedience my call for you tonight is are you going to allow the work of the cross his death his burial his resurrection to just waste like that because of stubbornness and rebellion remember the first thing that happened to man was disobedience and the first thing that happened to satan was rebellion do not allow a combination of rebellion and disobedience to separate you from him eternally there are people who have been martyred because of this gospel church history is full of men and women who died believing in jesus i can tell you even in death they cheated death my precious and wonderful mentor miles munro sadly he died through a plane crash it was so disheartening why would he die through a plane crash until i realized that he always said it that in death he would cheat death it is only your body that goes can i tell you this those who die huh few minutes before their actual death they don't feel any physical pain again you are the only one sympathizing with the pain of the body i can tell you this few minutes to their death the power of this body and the pain thereof does not hold on them again no matter how deteriorated the body is that transition is happening unto life eternal or unto eternal damnation please look up let me tell you this anybody who dies without jesus there is no repentance again there is no forgiveness again i repeat there is no repentance again it is painful but there are people who have died there is no record in scripture that from the time jesus died and resurrected anyone who died had the gospel preached to them in hell that happened before jesus resurrected remember lazarus he cried a cry and said please what i want you to do is let somebody from this place rise up and enter the world and go to my family members and tell them please this thing is real and hear the reply he said they have moses and they have the law if they don't listen to them even if somebody comes out of the grave today they will not listen to them you don't have to wait until a dead body resurrects and tells you it is real here and there there are people who have resurrected from the dead others have seen nonsense what they have seen we know from scripture that that thing is not it's not a revelation from scripture at all it's just divination they were deceived but there have been genuine encounters of people for this promise is unto you and to your children and listen to me don't sit back there saying i'm happy i'm glad i belong to jesus if you are the only one who lives out of a family of 200 people and you are the only one who lives you never got to tell them about jesus you know in church sometimes we're afraid of saying this other part because we say we don't want people let me tell you this being saved and being prepared for the resurrection is more than just trying to scare you jesus said when the spirit comes he will reprove the world of three things of sin of righteousness and of judgment i've not been to hell as a revelation so i will not come here and say oh, i was mm, i've not i've seen demons i've seen all kinds of wicked spirits 
but I've not been given the privilege to go to hell to see it. But let me tell you the truth. The lake of fire, even hell, is real. Believers, at Easter, God mandates that we take a review, number one, of our lives and our destinies. Number two, we become active intercessors for those who are not saved. Because let me tell you, the catastrophe that happens when the church leaves, even your arch enemy, you will not want him to go through that kind of thing. Believe me. I told you that the catastrophe that will come to earth will make World War II look like humanitarian services. What then is the significance of Easter? Number one, it is a time of gratitude to God for this eternal escape from damnation. Gratitude to God for using his blood and his sacrifice on the cross to bring for us this eternal escape from damnation. Translating us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his eternal son. Number two, what is the significance of Easter? A moment of reflection. A moment of reflection. What does it mean to reflect? To think deeply. So that you continue to walk in the truths that you have received. And so that you continue to guard jealously. In another teaching, I hope in one of the series before the year ends, we'll be able to deal with this issue i hope i'll remember to bring it once saved are you always saved i will answer it during that series and will hopefully bring to end the confusion of what we call eternal security or do you have to keep working out your salvation in both dimensions i have had disastrous imbalances on both sides and i trust that god will give us perspective to understand and we'll be answering questions like, can a believer lose his salvation? If yes, what is the condition? Are we together? So, Easter is a moment of number one, thanksgiving. Number two, sober reflection. Number three, Easter should be a moment of active soul winning, active evangelism. One of the greatest ways to commemorate the resurrection of Jesus Christ is to be sure to declare to someone go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. You see, let me tell you, Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, I am both old and new school. We have to be careful at some of these things we have thrown out. We have replaced some of these songs you see. I'm, I'm not talking about the songs. I'm talking about the ideas. The average believer today is not soul winning conscious. We are receiving conscious. Don't get me wrong. God wants to give us all things freely to enjoy. But the average believer is not evangelical in his thinking. Especially Pentecostals and Charismatics. Soul winning, zero. Our idea of soul winning, sadly and respectfully, for most people is just a strategy for addition of church membership. Now listen carefully. Listen carefully. And there is nothing wrong with that. Because until you have membership you cannot train and mentor them the institution of the church is the only platform that is able to mentor and raise believers if everyone seated looking at me now covenants with god that to honor this easter lord i will bring you the gift of two souls three souls think how many people would be saved just during this period we used to sing a song those days. Please take it down for me so I don't shout. In Anglican. Must I go an empty hand? Must I meet my Savior so? Not one soul with which to greet him. Must I empty hand and go? 
okay jesus christ i made it what did you bring as a gift nothing i brought myself be grateful that i am saved you will become like that man with one talent who said i know you are a hard man you like reaping when you did not sow it's not enough to be saved you must ensure that through your life imagine how many people will walk up to you in heaven and look at you and tap you and you say who are you you say you may not remember but thank you for giving to the lord i am a light that was saved thank you for giving to the lord i am so glad you came listen may it not be that that day you will turn and see your roommate you will turn and see somebody you laugh with and ate with in your office for 10 years and never told the person about jesus the person drove you as a big man for 15 years never heard about jesus christ apostle but i don't want to fall my hand i can tell you this believe it or not the worst one is that you see your family members can i tell you nobody will be spared who does not have that software of the resurrection power of jesus that trump and in a moment all of us in christ will arise for some of you the lord jesus will tell you remember that night in koinonia when my son was shouting you laughed at the jokes but when it was time for an altar call you sat down when my spirit was telling you this is the moment of destiny we will not be here forever whether we like it or not that is the truth our goal is to live as long as our assignments demand serving the purposes of god and living victoriously but can i tell you you can have assurance today of salvation and you can tap into that resurrection power there is such a doctrine of the resurrection our hope is not only in this life i will pray for you to prosper always i will pray for you to increase always i will pray for you to do well always but my greatest joy is not that you receive these things my consolation should be at the back of your prosperity at the back of your increase you have settled it with god and that power of resurrection dwells within you and you know that whether in life or in death you are victorious till he returns or calls me home here in the power of christ i stand what height of love what depth of peace till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ I remember many years ago watching Reinhard Bonke on that crusade ground I was already saved but I watched him I followed his ministry very carefully and I saw times when he started getting old I remember the last time he came for his crusade in Lagos as though he knew it would be his last the day they said he had gone I said my God this man was once alive and now he's gone hear me there are people who were alive as of January this year some have gone in fact there were those who were alive yesterday I would never mean you evil and as far as my assignment is concerned I will keep speaking life so that you will have that body healthy and prepared to leave your assignment but can i tell you it is not a wise way to fear death 
the purpose of longevity is not the fear of death the purpose of longevity is the time and the enablement to fulfill the purposes of God given to you look at me I want you to kill the fear of death this night to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord and if he comes hallelujah thine the glory hallelujah amen hallelujah thine the glory revive us again before we pray we are going to have three minutes of intercession that will be our corporate gift as a ministry to the lord jesus at this easter to say lord the least we can do is to intercede for the next two minutes for souls but before we do that i want to make an altar call while you are still seated there's no point playing games can i tell you if you take seriously what i'm saying god can give you a chance to make it right i don't need to cajole you no matter how stubborn your spirit is the holy ghost must have penetrated it to tell you that this issue of life and destiny this is it you are saying apostle while i'm seated here i cannot say for sure that if i die today it is heaven there are others who are saying if jesus comes i may be part of the many you are saying will be left behind i don't mean to scare you but listen to me i'm going to count one to three give your destiny a chance win that war or you are saying apostle i think i remember making this call but as it is my life has gone haywire i came to church i don't want to play games i want you to run and come and stand here nobody will force you but on that day there used to be a song we used to sing before um what's the song now on the last day on, on the last day only true believers on the last day only true believers on the last day tell you if you know you are going to hell run out and come and stand here don't do big manism for your eternal destiny no it is not a wise choice apostle i'm not sure join them and be sure there is such a thing called the assurance of salvation don't mind all the naysayers who are saying you are coming out it's better to come out five times and be sure than to sit back in assumption and go to hell Come to Jesus. Come to Him. Once and for all, come to Him. Everyone you see who is not coming out must have made this decision. So there is nothing embarrassing about it. If you are coming, all the overflows, please make sure you stand there. We are going to intercede. But I thought to do this so that I get it out of the way. Quickly, please come. Apostle, I've been going to church. I confess that I've been one of the people laughing at preachers. Don't worry, we forgive you. God loves you. Join them. Join them. You have to be saved. After this, you can now say Happy Easter and really believe what you are saying. There is nothing happy about the Easter to a soul that is determined to be damned. Thus will we pass from the earth and its toiling. Only remember by what we have done. Come, I'll give you one more minute. I know there are so many people, but there is still room. There is still room come to Jesus and those of you who are sitting you shouldn't be looking you should be praying because we're from this altar call now we're going to get into praying just five minutes if you cannot invest five minutes of your intercessory ministry for souls you are not a lover of God 
There's no need hurrying anywhere. I want to pray. Listen to me. Those of you who are here, please look at me. The idea is not to scare you, but the idea is to leave you with the truth. Jesus died and rose. You took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now today you reign in heaven and earth exalted. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours forever and ever. I will love you. You are the only one who died for me. Gave your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you in adoration. May I please request, I know that there are so many of you, some of you are crying. There's no need to cry someday because of this decision you have made we will have another kind of koinonia not in this place do you know there is another fellowship i know there is another fellowship lift your right hand please say after me all of you you may cry but say it jesus is here let him hear you in one minute please say after me from the depth of your heart say lord jesus i come to you tonight just as i am unable to help myself i have heard your word tonight i need you say it again i need you in my life i need the power of resurrection in my spirit i confess you as my savior the one who died for me as my lord the one my allegiance is towards and as my king the governor of my destiny i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that as jesus defeated sin the grave death and hell i also by this confession i declare my my victory over sin over hell over death over the grave i declare that i have eternal life the resurrection power now lives within me i am a child of god victorious on earth and victorious even after this life in jesus name i pray amen and amen let me pray for you father by their confessions of faith i decree and declare that indeed they not only have salvation but they have the assurance of salvation let nothing ever pluck them from your hand in the name of jesus lord you will save them you will keep them you will establish them now i pray for you the fear of death and doubt whether you belong to jesus or not i command that thought to leave your destiny forever let me remind you that you are not saved just by what you have done no man is able to save himself by the works of the law it is vanity and it is vain you are only saved because you believe in this reality that jesus came he walked upon the earth he died went to hell defeated hell death sin and the grave resurrected triumphantly and now he lives and abides forever now hear me please ladies and gentlemen let me encourage you make up your mind to continue to pursue that which makes for your spiritual establishment even as you have done the house of god is where we are built where we are established it's not just going to church like coming to be a member of a church it is more than that it is being planted in the house of god so that you will flourish in the courts of our god now there are a number of you um and i know that 
a number of you are rededicating your lives to christ i presume counselors you can manage both sets those who are making their decision the first time you can group them so you spend more time those who are rededicating their life because of the crowd i'm not sure that because we have to get into a prayer session now so you can just pray so that they can return back to their seats there are so many people and so that it can ease up the work for the counselors our focus primarily now as far as follow-up is concerned is those who are saved for the first time so let me encourage you as you go those who are this is the first time you are making this decision it's an opportunity for you they will ask you to be grouped somewhere else please move there so they can just speak a word of prayer for those who are rededicating their lives and then they rush back are we together but for now may i request that you please move to my right which is your left let's celebrate them a number of them okay we are splitting into two right from where i'm standing all those who are here please go this way and then the remaining go that way thank you we're helping to manage because of the number of people let's celebrate them as they go hallelujah now our time is up in the next five minutes we are going to is this is our corporate gift tonight to the lord jesus i want you to think of at least two or three people you know who are not saved it could be your loved ones it could be someone and let's cry as a family of faith and say lord they will not go to hell not when we are here if you don't have anyone to pray for pray in the spirit please pray there has to be someone in your life some relative somewhere some unbeliever somewhere and those of you who are viewing following here is your chance to intercede pray for someone's eternal destiny lord that they will not be lost don't be tired lord in the name of jesus we decree and declare from the north to the south east to the west we pray for the unreached we pray for the unsaved we pray for missionaries we pray for men and women who are out there in the field crying for souls in the name of jesus strengthen them lord we pray that you save to the uttermost as a global family of faith we bring to you as a gift our intercession over the lost lord save them we release angels bring them to the foot of the cross pray for your father pray for your mother pray for your brothers and sisters pray for your colleagues in the office pray let a fire of salvation engulf africa nigeria europe pray for europe pray for america pray for these regions that seem to be losing out in many ways lord revive them pray lord we pray for salvation we pray for salvation we intercede for the lost bring them to the foot of the cross in the name of jesus 
we decree and declare that the power of resurrection will catch up with them that they may know Jesus they will pledge their lives and their days to your Lordship Lord, we intercede in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer point. This one will be to you now. You are going to pray and say, Father, the power of resurrection, let it speak in my life right now. Total victory. Lift your voice and pray. The culmination of it will be when the trumpet blasts. But there are measures of it that have been given unto us to experience right now. Go ahead and pray. The power of resurrection, it must work in my life. That power that raised Christ from the dead. Someone is praying. That I may know you and that I may walk in the power of your resurrection. The power of resurrection. Bringing life and vitality to my body. The power of resurrection. Keeping me alive all through the moments of my assignment. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Up from the grave he arose with the mighty triumph o'er his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he leads forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. He arose. Last prayer point. Everything dead in my destiny because he arose. I command you by the power of resurrection. Arise now. Open your mouth and begin to pray. My health that is dead or dying, arise now. Is someone praying? Because he arose from the grave, everything locked up in the grave, finances, opportunities, my destiny, I command you by the power of resurrection, like Lazarus, come forth. New doors that will give me an opportunity to serve his majesty, come forth. Go ahead and declare. Please pray, please pray, please pray. Make meaning of your Easter. Because he arose, I decree and declare. I arise spiritually, I arise financially, I arise destiny wise, I arise. And every power of the grave, every power of the grave every grave clothes over my life every grave clothes over my ministry are you praying every grave clothes over my family my children pray i command you give way right now i lose those grave clothes if he arose then i arise if he arose then i arise pray over every challenge in your life financial challenges health challenges because he arose i arise refuse to remain in the grave he is risen the 
doctrine of resurrection demands that like he arose you also arise same power that conquered the earth lives in me ah, lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me ah, lives in me prophesy over your destiny same power that conquered the earth lives in me Lives in me, your love, your love, your love that rescued me. Lives in me. Listen, I want to prophesy and declare and activate that power of resurrection. Now that you are still alive, there are still other things that are dead. And you can't be alive and something around your life is now dead. I want to speak, believe it, that in the name of Jesus, dead finances, let the power of resurrection cause you to come back to life now relationships come back to life now dead opportunities come back to life now dead health conditions hear me anyone here who is sick in your body and the devil is already trying to see that he deteriorates your body I command that dead organ to come back to life now dreams dreams that god gave you but for some reason they have died it comes back to life now <laughs> giftings abilities that have died that god gave you to bring you increase to bring you significance i decree and declare they come back to life now I hear me anyone wearing any grave clothes in the realm of the spirit by the power that raised Christ from the dead I lose you now go free 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 in the name of Jesus hear me any family here represented that has a loved one that is not saved we release angels to those houses we release angels to those houses supernatural encounters through dreams and visions in the name of Jesus Christ hear me please anyone having dreams of untimely death you keep seeing yourself with dead people you keep seeing yourself dreaming or maybe prophetic words have been coming be careful I see you dying I want to declare to you by reason of the power of death nothing takes you until your assignment is over I repeat nothing takes you until your assignment is over two more prayers everyone here under the yoke of the spirit of fear you can't live your life freely because you are afraid what if i go out and i die what if i come and i die what if i take a plane and it crashes what if i go by road and something happens i command that spirit of death that comes through fear to live your life now yeah. 
in the name of Jesus the works of your hands whatever has died hear the word of the Lord I bring to you the resurrection power hear me if the grave could not stop Jesus from coming back to life I transport anything that needs to come from the realm of the spirit into this physical realm by the resurrection power let it appear in your physical realm here hear me if Jesus could leave one dimension into another then every blessing that you need locked up in the realm of the spirit I pull it down to manifest in the physical realm in the name of Jesus say after me very loud and clear say in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that I am a child of God born of the word and born of the spirit I believe that Jesus walked upon the earth I believe he died I believe he was buried I believe he went to the place of the dead I believe he defeated Satan sin hell and the grave I believe he resurrected by the glory of the Father I believe that he ascended to heaven I believe he is seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for me. I believe that I am victorious in this life and hereafter. No more fear, no more limitations, no more anxiety. I am victorious today and victorious always. Give Jesus a big shout of praise. hallelujah the bible says the righteousness of faith speak it on this wise i want you to go back home today carrying that consciousness i am victorious don't let life bully you in life you are victorious beyond it you are victorious if he rose you will rise on that day but for now everything connected to you must rise to match up what has happened in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah hold hands together final prayer and then we're done I am serving a living God his name is Jesus Christ he died and rose and gave me victory. I have victory. One more time from the depth of your heart. I am serving a living God. His name is jesus christ he died he died and rose and gave me victory i have victory now i can tell you happy easter Happy Easter means a victorious Easter that you commemorate with understanding that you are a victor and you remain a victor forever. Next week, by the grace of God, is a powerful miracle service for the month of April. Hallelujah. We're going to take it in this vein and it's going to be a time of prayer, sharing the word, and ministering to the needs of people i will never be tired of ministering to the needs of people until the glory of the lord is revealed in your life in the name of jesus christ i want to sincerely listen we're wrapping up but listen to me 
I want to use this opportunity to sincerely appreciate everybody. I may not do this all the time, but I want you to know that I appreciate everyone for the labor of love and the efforts, the sacrifices. I'm amazed to know that sometimes from 10 o'clock, people are already here and sitting patiently praying just to have one encounter. I assure you of one thing, your spiritual progress and the results that follow your pursuit will be evidence to all in the name of jesus christ at the end of the grace when we're done sharing please you greet one another and tell them happy easter and then you tell them you are victorious let's share the grace in fellowship any announcements i'm not sure there's any right so please don't forget don't come alone make sure at least two or three people come with you for the miracle service and by god's grace we'll work at starting five on the dot so that we can do well and then conserve the time the lord bless you this week is a blessed one for you indeed you will see the fruits of victory all the days of your life in jesus name i pray let's share the grace the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever Amen. Happy Easter and you are victorious. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Your blood that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. my sins, incline thy ears to my words, 
Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like, 